high pressure scent god bless you you're welcome to the fourth month the month of april genesis chapter one and speaking from verse one the bible said and god said in the beginning let there be light this is the beginning of the month of april i don't know what your expectation from god must have been but one thing is certain is that there is a beginning to everything this month beginning is a beginning for you a new season it's a beginning for you a new open door it's a beginning for you a new phase a new chapter of your life it's a beginning of your new encounters with god it's a beginning where all things were passed away and all things are made new all things are made fresh all things are made to come alive because the word of the lord will be breathed upon it the word of the lord will hit every aspect of your life and absolutely bring them back to life i don't know what has been dead in your life i don't know what has been stagnant i don't know what has been dormant in your life there is a beginning and surely this is the beginning of restoration for you stay tuned and watch as the word of the lord comes to us on this platform reflector hub tv via the mouth of his servant apostle joshua selman god bless you so much stay tuned and get blessed Lift your hands to heaven. Give him quality thanks tonight. We give you praise. We give you praise. Are you giving God quality thanks for tonight? For your manifold blessings. For your good hand upon our lives. You have done all things well and to you be all the glory someone is telling god thank you oh 
Rade Barato Sabrade Belando Sia. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. They go from strength to strength. Everyone that appears before the Lord in Zion. Hallelujah. Now cry your heart before the Lord and say, Give me an encounter tonight. Give me a destiny defining visitation. Someone is praying. A destiny defining visitation. A destiny defining visitation. Let me hear something that will change my life forever. Let me encounter a dimension of the spirit that will cause me to flourish even in the spirit. For in Jesus mighty name we pray. In Jesus mighty name we pray. The church is called the house of God primarily because of the presence of God, not just the presence of men. What gives value to church is not the preacher necessarily, not the members necessarily, not the excellence necessarily. What gives value to church is the presence of God. When you take away the presence factor, it can no longer be called the house of God. The singular definition of the house of God is not just where God dwells, but where he has chosen to reveal himself. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, surely this is the gate of heaven. This is the house of God. Hallelujah. I welcome you to Koinonia. We are committed to ensuring that every service becomes for you a destiny defining moment. And that is by the word of God, that is by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Our approach is always the word of God in partnership with the ministry of the Spirit. And so I welcome you to a destiny defining encounter. And I assure you truly, tonight will be one of those services you will not forget in a hurry. It's a believer shouting amen. amen. Make up your mind already that I will not be a spectator. Hallelujah. You must be an active participant. How? Number one, by listening. Not just hearing, listening. To hear means to just allow sounds to enter through your ears. To listen means to connect your hearing to purpose. Your attention is there. Your heart is is connected to hallelujah and then of course you listen with the determination to practice what you are hearing are we together when you listen just for the purpose of awareness it will not profit you they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not mixed with faith in them that heard it hallelujah and so i bless you all in the name of jesus and may tonight be an extraordinary encounter and our family connecting across the globe. May God bless you. This is Koinonia. Please be seated. And while seated, let's honor again Reverend Akila this time around with his dear wife. Let's give them a big Koinonia welcome. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. And to everyone who has come, including our guests, we're a house of honor. You are most welcome in the name of Jesus. A few very important announcements and then we get straight to um, the word and I want you to please pay attention. Number one is concerning um, the agro empowerment project by God's grace. Um, our partners, those who are working with the CSS farm, they're done collating all the list and they've sent it. So we hope that between now and um, hopefully the weekend before the miracle service by God's grace, all those who will be part of it, you will be notified and then a schedule will be created for your training and then you take it from there. So just to let you know, to the glory of God, and we appreciate the CSS group for tirelessly working and um, you can imagine sorting over 4,000 lists and we thank God for their passion and um, their commitment. And remember as always, this is our commitment we are not doing everything but we'll do the best that we can do with the time energy and resources that we have hallelujah praise the name of the lord 
The second assignment uh, announcement is a very important one. By God's grace, this week um, we have a quick trip to Boston, and um, I've had the honor of being invited by Harvard University to. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So I've extended, we have a series of lectures that we'll be delivering. Um, Harvard University to the glory of the name of the Lord. So we have two lectures, one your school of divinity, the second is your school of graduate education. This is something only God can do. Hallelujah. Um, praise the name of the Lord. So Harvard is not a church, is one of the most prestigious institutions on earth. There are things, I believe that this is a message to the body of Christ. There is nothing God cannot do. Did you hear what I said? There is no man God cannot lift. It's a different thing when a church says, come and organize a program, you see. But these are people, most of them are not even born again. So there are no biases and there are no prejudices. Hallelujah. Many years ago, God told me, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. You see, when God does some of the things he does with us, he uses the foolish things. It's a message to people. You see that now. The message there is not that the man of God is rising. The message is that God is still a lifter. Are we together? And so I want to thank already all the professors and all who have labored tirelessly to put this together. We look forward to a great time. Now, um, just two announcements. So one is the lecture. We have two lectures. One is on the 26th, School of Divinity. And then on the 28th will be the School of Graduate Education. And then... Of course, I'm still a man of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So um, we're not just talking leadership, human capital development, and national transformation. We have evening meetings also. We've graciously been able to work out something with them so that at least we bless the territory. This is outside of the Harvard community, but it's still uh, within the Cambridge area. And we're trusting God for an exceptional time. It will be two nights. Tuesday and Wednesday, there will be intense moments of prayer and extraordinary encounters. So in the day, we're speaking as leaders, intellectual discussions, and then in the night, we take on the ministry regalia. Hallelujah. That is what it means to wear a coat of many colors. Praise the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now, um, I'm not sure that um, as many people will be allowed for the lecture. You understand that, you know, academic lectures are usually very closed. Um, I know that there's a QR code there, but I'm, I'm sure that it most likely may have been exhausted. Um, I don't want to breach their protocol. They have a way their system works. So, but you can try since they put a QR code there. If you're fortunate to, and it goes through and you are invited to join the lecture, then that is fine. But if you try it and it doesn't work, then don't take it personal. They just have a system um, that works for them. But for the evening meeting, please let me have the bill for the evening. That's my concern now. Um, yes, thank you very much. So um, I know that we're still coming in July for Sound of Revival. And um, I didn't even know at the beginning of the year that I'll still be in the U.S. at this time. My mind had always been on July, but God does his things and we're yielded vessels when he gives a matching order. And I know that this is a prophetic thing that God is doing. So it's beyond just delivering a lecture. We're importing something great, something spiritual. We want to deposit a dimension of God's presence and plant a revival there in the name of Jesus. So all who can, I know that uh, particularly our U.S. family, I'm not sure that the organizers may have the provision to host as many people who will want to come so let me say it up front not everybody may be able to make it this is an extra arrangement 
aside from the lecture so that we're able to reveal Christ to that territory in a more personal way. But you can go ahead and scan the QR code. Let's see as many people as whatever auditorium they'll be using would take. And it doesn't matter whether it's two people or 1,000 or 2,000 or 500. That's not the idea. The idea is to have a seed within that region. Are we together? And so if you are part of our global family or you are following from the U.S., if you are not able to travel down there, that is fine. It may even be better for them so that they are not overwhelmed. You can imagine if you have, say, five, 6,000 people, um, I don't know what level of arrangement they have made, but you can already imagine it may be overwhelming. So for those who are within the Boston area, please take advantage of it. And um, let's see how God will help us. And those who are far and not around that area, you can connect. We'll walk at seeing that this, the lectures show will not be aired, but we'll do our best to see that um, we make this, we air it on Koinonia Global Platform so that um, at least everyone can follow and then we can be witnesses what God is doing. Hallelujah. So US, this is for you, but of course this is also for the body of Christ so that we connect. It's going to be a powerful time. Two days I'll be teaching, we'll be praying. I'll be praying for the sick, ministering to people, prophesying by the Spirit, and um, we trust that God will grant us grace. I believe that God is doing something in America in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we in agreement? And so as we always do, just give us one of the bills for Harvard. Just stretch your hands. You are praying for that. You are praying for me. We are people of prayer. Our philosophy in this ministry is that as I travel, we go with the spirit and the grace and the backing of God's people. Pray that it will not just be the marketing of self, even though we are speaking to an intellectual community, but that God will import wisdom. Wisdom through our communication. He says, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your adversary will not be able to gainsay nor resist that our tongues will be pens of ready writers will communicate truths and share thoughts that are articulate precise intelligent and that even though they are academic discussions they will draw many to jesus and plant within them a greater consciousness of faith hallelujah and then let's pray for the evening meetings in the name of Jesus, let's decree and declare that on account of this meeting, someone will be saved. On account of this meeting, someone will be transformed. On account of this meeting, someone will be healed. That a family living within the Boston, Massachusetts area that have been crying for an encounter for a visitation, that this will be their moment. That a prophet, an apostle, an evangelist in the making, that God will find a worthy vessel. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you are giving us to extend your influence to the nations, both religious and secular institutions. We pray that you will be glorified. We pray that beyond this, men will be inspired to see that there is nothing you cannot do. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the third and final announcement before I get to the word is by the grace of God Almighty, our Koinonia Global Conference for this year will be from November uh, Thursday the 14th to Sunday the 17th. Hallelujah. Now by, this is not the name it will be called. This is just a teaser by Miracle Service who will bring the proper bill for it. This is just something they just made just to organize the announcement. But you write it down. This one is for Koinonia Global. This is for the body of Christ, but this is our conference. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Mark your calendars and everyone from across the globe, once you are on earth, find your way to Abuja. Come from everywhere. All the continents, all um, the nations, as many as can be represented, this is a global, this is our apostolic convention as a ministry. And it's going to be an awesome time. It starts from Thursday, the 14th of November to Sunday to end with a miracle service. Hallelujah. And so it's going to be two sessions, morning, evening, morning, evening. It's going to be a feast of the spirit like you have never encountered. Hallelujah. 
We trust God for an extraordinary moment. You will be proud of being part of this vision. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we'll pray on that next week. We'll bring a proper bill for it. And then we'll announce it. But please let our global family know that this is our own conference. Other details will come next week. But we thank God. Are you happy about the many things God is doing? The meaning of that is that you cannot remain where you are. You must keep rising. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, there are vehicles that are connected using a lever system to other, maybe other carriages. And they don't, the engine does not have to be connected there. You just put tires. And when the main vehicle is moving, it drags the others by force. Hallelujah. And this is what God is doing. This year you must go forward. Yeah. It will be clear in your life that God is not only visiting you, he's rewarding you. Yeah. I like, I think that should be Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 15. Maybe this is a prophetic word for someone. Isaiah 60 and verse 15. It just came to my spirit. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee. He says, I will make thee an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Where people have said, people like you don't rise. Where people have said, those from this family doesn't rise. God will shock men this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your rising will be unstoppable. Because it is by the Spirit. Listen. I want you to respect the ministry of the word and respect the ministry of the spirit. God is able to take men from anywhere to anywhere. Deuteronomy 28, it says, If it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all his commandments which I commanded this day. Result, the Lord your God will set thee on high. I like this. Above all the nations of the earth. Not above your village. Not above your community. He says you will be blessed in the city. And you will be blessed in the country. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12, 2 and 3. Blessing Abraham. He made some very profound statements. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. Then it says in thee, in thee, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I'm saying it again. You will not be small this year. Receive it as a prophetic word. You will not be small this year. My God will expand you and enlarge you. Your enemies will watch with shock and wonder as God lifts you. Did you hear what I said? Those that have despised you, despised your ministry, despised your family, right before your eyes, my God will prepare a table for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is what it means to enjoy the ministry of the Spirit. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. Adonai Adonai Let your kingdom come It's our prayer, it's a ministry Let your kingdom come Let your kingdom rule Ala sala brandagada let your kingdom rule Let your kingdom reign in my life It's my prayer tonight Let your kingdom reign in my life 
speaking over your life one more time you will be a sign and a wonder honestly you will be a living sign and a wonder listen that men will sit down and your life will be a scripture that people will read out they will marvel and wonder how could God lift like this how could God give wisdom like this I pray it upon your life may you be a sign and a wonder you are part of a ministry that is a sign and a wonder may that gene flow through your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated please be seated hallelujah now listen ladies and gentlemen I want you to trust the truths that you are receiving not because of the person teaching it but because of the integrity of the one who backs what is being taught are we together yes koinonia is not just a ministry it's a school of the spirit and like i have taught you there is a making that is happening to you you don't become in one day so be patient with god you don't become in one day so be patient with your destiny the Bible says, now are we the sons of God. It says, and it doth not yet appear. You may not look like it, but I assure you by the integrity of scripture that if you pay attention, don't choose what you want to listen to. If you trust the person teaching you, submit yourself. It says, meditate on these things. Give yourself, not just listen, give yourself wholly to them. And it says, you're profiting will appear unto all your profiting will appear unto all God is not a politician unfortunately God is not some businessman whose hand you can manipulate are we together if you walk in keeping with his truth the Bible says he's no respecter of persons mysteriously but predictably he will lift you and he will turn your life to be a sign and a wonder this is what God is making out of you it's important that I keep reminding you of this picture. Remember I taught, was it last week or week after, before, about the various kinds of mirrors that you look at. Some of you have looked at the mirror of culture, the mirror of whatever it is, and you are not seeing what God is doing. Tonight, journey with me as we look at the mirror of the word so that you see what God is making out of your life as a prophet, making out of your life as an apostle, making out of your life as a pastor, making out of your life as a businessman. Are we together? Making out of your life as a parent, making out of your life as a supposed nobody. Nobodies are empty enough to be filled by God. See? When he comes and finds you full of yourself, he will leave you in your pride. But when he comes and finds you in a state where you know you are not much on your own, then you give him room to fill you. Hallelujah. Fasten your seatbelts tonight as we explore God's word. I'm teaching tonight on the spirit of revelation. I want to teach you how to derive profit from scripture. It's going to be a very interesting discussion and whilst you are listening something will fall upon you from heaven in the name of jesus christ the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened you will step into a greater comprehension of scripture with proof to show that your understanding is not fruitless the spirit of revelation the spirit of revelation my focus tonight is to help us understand how to derive profit from scripture our world and the christian community the average christian has a bible in their house here's mine upstage here most of us have us either in hard copy or electronic versions and most believers are students of scripture most students believers study but it is very clear from our results and from our understanding that for the most part the average believer has not been guided into the dynamics of de deriving profit from scripture 
Hallelujah. And if you are not taught about this mysterious book you see called the Bible and how the spirit of revelation helps men to profit from scripture, the Bible will remain a burden to you that does not carry any profit. It will remain a religious book or one of those historic monuments that you have around your life. Please, I want you to pay attention. I assure you that your destiny and your spiritual understanding depends on the light you are about to hear. Let's talk a bit about the Bible. While I was preparing my notes, I just thought to spend a few minutes discussing this Bible so that you understand a few things. So let's do a bit of theology. Are you ready? The Bible, as we know, is a collection of 66 books. This version of the Bible that we know. I wrote a few things here and just let me read while you listen. The Bible is a collection of 66 books. There are 66 books recorded here. And 39 of them make up what we call the Old Testament. Say Old Testament. Don't worry, keep being childlike. Just say Old Testament. And the remaining 27 are the New Testament. Of course, we know that there are other um, references. For instance, like the Roman Catholic Bible, there are a lot of other provisions beyond the 66 books. Just to mention them, I think in the Roman Catholic Bible is about 73 or so. There are a number of additions, um, books, particularly in the Old Testament, the Tobit, the Judith, 1st and 2nd Maccabees, the Siraj, and then Wisdom of Solomon, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, in addition to the Bible, there are many other extra-biblical materials. The books of Jasha, the Annals of the Kings, are we together? The books of Enoch, and a lot of other materials. But then we're dealing with the 66 books as we know. Are we together? Now, the Bible, as we know from a historic standpoint, the Bible was written by over 40 authors. At least 36 of them are mentioned as the authors of those Bibles. Now we know from theology and we know from Bible history that there were many other people that wrote the Bible and some books of the Bible uh, till date there's not been an agreement even among the rabbinical institutes there's not been an agreement as to who was the author of some of these books but just for you to know the bible contains 66 books um 39 old testament 27 the new testament and then of course written by over 40 authors over a period of a thousand five hundred years amazing isn't it that from genesis at least as we know from the time the documentation started till the last the the distance the gap is about five one thousand five hundred years hallelujah now the bible tells us we i want us to look at a very interesting scripture i think it's a scripture that um has been a great blessing to many but it's brought a lot of confusion second timothy chapter 3 please from verse 16. second timothy 3 i'm teaching on the spirit of revelation let's read together ready one to read come on read like people who have life power and hope ready one to go all scripture is given by inspiration of god mm -hmm. For correction, for instruction in righteousness. Just stop at verse 16. So the Bible tells us, and as written in scripture, that all scripture is profitable. That's the word that I want us to see. That the Bible scripture is profitable. Now, let me explain to you what this means. And my discourse, as far as the Bible is concerned, will be trying to give you light. If you do not understand what this means, you will never grow spiritually. Are we together? God prevailed upon the human authors of the Bible. Watch this now. God prevailed upon the authors of the Bible so that while using their own styles of writing 
and in spite of the differences in their understandings and their personalities they still recorded exactly what God intended are you understanding me now that in as much as the authors had different personalities they had different styles of writing some from a historic standpoint some from a, a poetic standpoint are we together some from an archaeological standpoint some a presentation of literature and it didn't matter what point the point here is that god prevailed over the human authors of the bible so that in spite of their styles of writing in spite of their level of understanding many times in scripture we see progressions in the understanding and the revelations of some of these authors the bible tells us that they were able to record as god intended now watch this when the bible says all scripture was inspired by god i want to explain to you what that means and what that does not mean the bible was not dictated by god no when it says all scripture was inspired by god it does not mean the bible was dictated by god it means it was guided and inspired by him there were all kinds of authors in the bible authors ranging from doctors some of them tax collectors some of them fishermen some of them shepherds some of them nomads some of them military people some of them kings some of them hedonistic people in the bible donkeys spoke in the bible satan spoke in the bible angels spoke in the bible animals spoke in the bible men spoke sometimes before and after their encounter with God like Paul like um, um, who else Abraham an idol worshiper and all of the Chaldeans now becoming the father of many nations now watch this the central point of the Bible listen please you have to listen the central point of the Bible is God his love for creation man's fall and his inadequacies Jesus as the Savior and only remedy and then the gospel of salvation in its entire scope it's a long read but I'll take it again that the central point of the Bible is God his love for his creation man's fall and inadequacies Jesus as the savior and only remedy and then the gospel and salvation in all its ramifications or the entire scope of it one last time to give you the patience to write that the central point of the Bible is God his love for his creation man's fall and inadequacies Jesus who came as savior and only remedy and then the gospel and salvation in its entire scope this is the central point of the bible are we together if you're following say amen, amen. now watch this the accuracy of the bible i wrote it here and i want you to listen the accuracy of the bible is not in the flawlessness of its writings listen please the accuracy of the bible is not in the flawlessness of its writings nor the personality of the authors but in its ability to deliver god's intent as far as the revelation of god jesus man and salvation is concerned the accuracy of the bible is not in the flawlessness of its writings that means when we say the bible is accurate what makes the bible accurate is not the flawlessness of the writings are we together what makes the bible accurate is not the dexterity of the personality of the writers what makes the bible accurate is its ability to deliver god's intent as far as the revelation of God the revelation of Jesus the revelation of man and the revelation of salvation is concerned so the Bible is only accurate 
if you look at it in its ability to reveal God, to reveal Jesus, to reveal man, and to reveal salvation. Now, you have that down? Is God working on your understanding? So when we say scripture is accurate, we are not saying scripture is accurate. In fact, let me just read this. I'm doing a bit of dictation. Be patient with me. The Bible I wrote here is not flawless as an archaeological material. No, it is not. As an archaeological material, it is not flawless. The Bible as a historic material is not flawless. The Bible as a capture of literature is not flawless. There are many books, for instance, that were written even by the authors that wrote some of this book in the Bible that were not captured there. That alone already dents the wholesomeness of the Bible from an archaeological or historic, are we together, standpoint. There are 66 books that were canonized when you study Bible history. But Moses did not just write the first five books, for instance. Genesis down to Deuteronomy. They are not the only books Moses wrote. There were other books he wrote that did not make it in the Bible. So we are saying the accuracy of the Bible is not in its archaeological flawlessness. When you get an archaeologist to vet the Bible, he will find many things wanting as far as the presentations are there. When you get a historian to vet the Bible as a history book, are we together? He is going to find many things wanting there. When you vet the Bible as a capture of literature, many people will even edit it. Look at me. Have you found yourself reading scripture and you see certain words written in italics? Have you seen that? Do you know why it is written in italics? In Bible history, those writings were not part of the original manuscript. They were imported so that they will help give perspective to your understanding. Are we together? And most of those who did those additions were not necessarily believers. Are we together now? Yes. Now, when Jesus and the plan of salvation becomes your compass watch this when jesus and the plan of salvation becomes your compass for navigating the scripture then it is accurate the accuracy of scripture in is in its ability to reveal god jesus man and salvation regardless the various authors so when you say the bible is accurate it is accurate because regardless the imperfections regardless the archaeological flaws historical flaws literature flaws are we together yes flaws in writings and interpretations when they were translated from greek hebrew aramaic latin down to english or whatever expression regardless it all those dents did not affect the purity of communicating the person of God, the purity of communicating the person of Jesus, the purity of helping you understand man, and the purity of the gospel and the plan of salvation. This is very powerful. Mm. Now, when the Bible says all scripture was inspired by God, you understand what it means now. Because the attention of God in moving those men to write was not necessarily the accuracy of the statements written it is that in that in the statements that they wrote sufficient information was given there to help men know god to help men understand the state of man to help men know jesus christ and to help men understand the gospel and the plan of salvation if you navigate scripture using the lens of any other thing, you will find a lot of inaccuracies. Hallelujah. So settle it for a fact that the Bible as an archaeological material is not flawless. The Bible as a historical material is not flawless. The Bible as a literary material, a piece of literature, is not flawless. It is only when you bring the Bible with respect to its ability to reveal God, 
with respect to its ability to reveal Jesus, with respect to its ability to reveal the state of man, and with respect to its ability to communicate the gospel and the plan of salvation. That is where the accuracy of scripture lies. Believers, are we learning now? That means anybody who tries to study the Bible and your lens is from any other thing and not the string of God, Jesus, man, salvation, you will really not understand the Bible. In fact, many things written there will annoy you. Are we together now? You will see a plethora of disjointed statements and supposed controversial statements and at the end of it, it will only plant debates and arguments in your spirit because you see, the central reason for the arrival of the Bible was still achieved. And so every other imperfection in the mind of God does not matter provided the believer studies scripture from the lens of the revelation of God, the revelation of the state of man, the revelation of Jesus, the revelation of the gospel and the plan of salvation. This is what makes the Bible a sacred material. Are we together now? Hmm. We're discussing the spirit of revelation. That means if you use the Bible as a prosperity book alone, there are many things you will find wanting. When you read the book, when you open the Bible, watch this, and you read it as a marriage counseling book alone, you may find many things you may not agree with. If you open the Bible and read it as a career book alone, you will find many things wanting. Because the idea, when the Spirit of God brought the authors, the goal is not that it just solves every problem arbitrarily. The central focus is to help you know God, help you know Jesus, help you understand the state of man, and help you understand salvation. Are we together? Now, there are times that you watch movies. And in those movies, there are other parts that you wonder why they were added in the movie. Are we together? They are there. You can't take them away. They add spice to the movie, but there is usually a central theme around it. Is that true? And so if you want to understand the movie, you keep your gaze on the starring actors and what is happening. All the things that happen on the side, you don't lose focus of it. Are we together? Yes. The reason why many believers do not understand scripture is because they do not understand how scripture should be studied. There is a true north, just for want of word. There is a central navigation system by which you understand scripture. If you approach scripture isolating the revelation of God, isolating the revelation of the state of man, isolating the revelation of Jesus, isolating the revelation of the gospel and salvation, the Bible will be a compendium of confusion. You will never be able to find the accuracy there. I repeat, therefore, that the accuracy of Scripture is not in its archaeological flawlessness. The, accu the, the accuracy of Scripture is not in its, his, in fact, is not even in its intellectual flawlessness. There are many things that if you study in Scripture intellectually, it will not add up. And yet, this is the Bible recommended to reveal God. Hmm. Are we together? Now, let me answer one question before we go to the spirit of revelation. If the Bible is centrally focused on God, man's condition, Jesus as the remedy, the gospel and salvation in its entirety, the question now becomes, can a believer use the Bible to study other aspects of human issues? Are we together? If the Bible is centered on God, man's state, Jesus, the gospel and salvation, can I use the Bible to solve other issues in life? The answer is in that same scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is profitable. How many? All scripture including the things that look like nonsense in the bible the bible says under a certain condition they can become profitable all scripture the reason why 
in spite of the limitations and the imperfections of the Bible, you don't need to throw them out. It's because there is a provision by God to make all scripture profitable for you. Hmm. Are we together? Watch this. While Jesus walked upon the earth, I hope you know that Jesus came as the word. While Jesus walked upon the earth, his focus was salvation. Am I right? Yet, he taught on other aspects of human life. Jesus did not just come and focus on salvation alone. His ultimate focus was salvation, revealing God to men and becoming that mediator, becoming that substitute in death. However, in the course of his sojourn on earth, the Bible is clear as to the fact that Jesus addressed various issues around human life. That means it is wise to conclude that even though the Bible is centrally focused on the revelation of God, man, Jesus, and salvation, the Bible is also profitable as a spiritual resource that can help man navigate through all the issues in life and destiny. But the issue is that it does not happen under all conditions. We are discussing the spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. Jesus taught on marriage. Jesus taught on relationships. Jesus taught on finance, extensively so. Jesus taught on diligence. Jesus taught on greatness and the price of greatness. Jesus taught on forgiveness and empathy. Jesus taught on leadership. Jesus taught on politics. Are you seeing the other areas? Now, these areas were not directly connected to the core assignment, yet they were captured in his discourse. The Bible does not hide the fact that he met a tax collector. They discuss economic issues. He discussed the issues of giving. Jesus discussed the issue of marriage and the complexities around marriage. They asked him questions. He did not run away from it. Are we together? Jesus discussed the issue of laziness. He gave parables that were not connected to salvation at all. They were parables that dealt with human living. It is safe to consider, therefore, that the Bible, even though centrally, it is meant to reveal God, I repeat again, the state of man, to reveal Jesus as the remedy and to help man understand the gospel. It is also wise to allow the Bible to be extended to solve every other problem in human life. Mm. Hallelujah. Are we learning so far? Do you understand everything I just said? Now, let's discuss the spirit of revelation. Ephesians 1 verse 17. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe Lord listen to me you have to read the Bible as a spiritual man to profit from it even if you are reading about business even if you are reading about marriage even if you are reading about relationships if you read the Bible as an intelligent intellectual you will find many gaps if you read the Bible entirely as a businessman, the Bible demands that there must be a state you assume for the profit of it to be derived. Are we together now? The Bible was designed to profit men to the degree to which they are spiritually minded as they read. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
Now, a businessman can open the Bible and read it and find valuable business lessons. But eventually, as you sojourn, you will find things that don't make sense and will not add up. Are we together? If you are a marriage counselor and you open the Bible looking for ideas, you will find valuable ideas that appeal to the intellect. But eventually, you will find confusing statements. If you read the Bible just as any other person who is not spiritual, it will profit you for a while. But one day you will stumble across thoughts, statements, ideas, expressions, stories, and personalities that will trouble and disturb your understanding. So, Ephesians 1 and verse 17. Paul for you. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, watch this, and the Father of glory may give unto you i hope you know he's speaking to people who are already born again may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse he says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened ye may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power now please lend me your attention again every story in the bible contains within it listen every story in the bible in fact it is even safe to say every statement and every expression in the bible contains within it lessons or principles that can cause the believer to walk in victory did you get that every statement every story every expression in the bible contains within it lessons or principles that can help the believer to walk in victory romans chapter 15 and verse 4 the bible says in romans 15 and verse 4 whatsoever things were written it didn't matter what it was even if it is statistics even if it's the statements that satan made even if it's a statement that demons made whatsoever were written aforetime provided they were written in this book the bible says there is profit from them you either have a lesson to learn from them or you have a principle to derive from them are you learning how to profit from scripture otherwise why would you read in the bible statements that satan made how does that profit you why would you read in the bible statements that hedonistic people wrote why would it profit you the bible would have just edited statements that only jesus said or only born again people said yet the bible is not afraid to scatter through its pages sometimes disturbing writings men cause god in the depravity of their minds and it was recorded in the bible so when the Bible says all scripture is inspired, it is not the accuracy of the statement that was inspired. It's the fact that God, God insisted that that statement, no matter how insulting or no matter how glorifying it is, that it should be written. That is why he did not leave you to read the scripture alone. There is a provision he gave you, a lens from which you can read any scripture and derive profit from it. The name of that provision is the spirit of of revelation the spirit of revelation is the profit factor in the believers learning scripture that when you engage scripture from the lens of the spirit of revelation any verse will profit you are we together you will find very disturbing scriptures in the bible like a lying spirit departed from god and came to saul and that statement is inconsistent with God's character. At least we learn God by looking at the person Jesus. Jesus never lied. He was full of grace and truth. So we have a right to say something was wrong with the people who wrote that statement. Either they are hearing because they were human. They are receiving. Yet all scripture, including that in insulting statement, was inspired by God to be written. Are we together? It is not the insult that God said to write. That means the insult itself does not profit. It does not profit by default. You don't insult God and it is profiting. But it was written there because there is a lesson that can be derived from it that will help you to live a profitable life. 
I always wondered why certain statements were written. If you have read your Bible properly, from Genesis to Revelation, and you are sincere, you should have been disturbed. You get to Songs of Solomon, you will jump it quickly and go to the next verse. You get to Leviticus, you are almost feeling sleepy. What in the world is this? Why do I need that for? You get to the book of Proverbs, the first three or four chapters just insults you, it's like a man slapping you. And you are wondering what in the world is this? You get to the book of Revelation, you are scared to death. You want to quit your job. What sort of a compendium? What was God about? Writing all those statements. And this vile and this beast, he sat on a horse. He judged the nations. People were roasted with fire. How does that encourage me? All scripture were inspired. Koinonia, are you learning now? It was not the events that were inspired. It was not the accuracy of the speakings that were inspired. But they were captured together because God would never let you learn them alone. He was going to give you the spirit of revelation. And the spirit of revelation is the one who guides you into all truth. That means not everything is truth. But everything is written. Not everything is truth. Did you hear what I said? Not everything is truth. But everything is written. <laughs> Not everything is truth. But everything is written. So the Holy Spirit guides you through the stories. Through both the sense and nonsense. And brings you to the point of scripture. Where you find truth. It is the reason why you can read a book and see a verse that may not have made sense but because the breath of the Spirit comes upon that verse, you learn a lesson. For instance, you read the book of Ecclesiastes. If you read it intellectually, you hate the Bible because you would think it is saying you should not walk, you should not do anything. Here was the frustration of the preacher. He said, here is the conclusion of the matter. Of reading many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness to the flesh. He says, this is the conclusion of the matter fear God and keep his commandments and said this is the whole duty of man so should I resign from my job as a result of this threat <laughs> so it means I should not press to increase all scripture you read that thing intellectually you will come up with errors and credit it to God and God says I have no hand in it I never ask you to read it intellectually or just historically you read all of those things as a build up while waiting for the spirit of revelation to sieve through the limitations and the personalities of those who wrote it and bring life to you the sun will no more give you sunlight by day the moon will no more give you moonlight by night Jehovah will be your everlasting I like that one Jehovah will be your everlasting light Jehovah will be your everlasting light Listen, listen, can I tell you Many preachers, many businessmen, many intellectuals Have been frustrated reading the Bible and it's just that sometimes we keep quiet so that it doesn't look like we hate God. But there are many people who are tired of reading a string of controversies in the scripture. And sometimes they get embarrassed that certain things should be written in scripture. Are we together? Look at certain explicit statements for want of word that were written in books like Sons of Solomon. Look at certain, I mean the Bible says perfect love cast out fear. But you read the book of Revelation and see from beginning to the end read it in amplified <laughs> by the time you are halfway that book you will be shaking physically will any man survive if god did not stay this play for this plague for the sake of the elect ah that means are there people who will survive this it is easier for a uh, how does he put it for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle what is the meaning of that? That means I'm going to hell? Jehovah will be your everlasting light. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. 
The moon will no more give you moonlight's bright Jehovah will be your everlasting light One more time Jehovah will be your everlasting light Ye air not knowing the scriptures See that? He says search the scriptures For in them you think you will find life The scriptures testify of me the scripture was not written for historians. The scripture was not written for archaeologists. The scripture was not written for um, English speaking people or any language. The scripture was written for spiritual people. There is a capture of all of these dimensions, but that in themselves they cannot profit the believer. Hmm. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. The spirit of revelation. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. See, that is the reason why you can read a lot of things and even teach it, but the result that follows does not come because light has not come are we together what profits you is not the verse what profits you is the light did you hear what i said what profits you is not the story what profits you is not the personality used what profits you is not the dexterity of the expression what profits you is the light hmm. And the Spirit entered me when he spoke unto me. I needed to hear him, but beyond the words. So the Bible says the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I tell you, many believers do not have revelation knowledge. And many believers do not know that the study of scripture and the profiting of scripture is beyond the realm of archaeology, is beyond the realm of history. Because there is a mystery to this book you are seeing. As opened as it is, there are seals in the spirit. It is your responsibility to open the book, but only the spirit of revelation can unlock the seals. Otherwise, you will only read a, a, a plethora of disjointed statements that will cause confusion to you, fear, doubts. Sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. Hear what the Bible says. That was the true light that lighted upon every man. There are false lights. They carry a semblance of power. They carry a, but they cannot, they don't have the potency to deliver the life of God. Are we together? Spirit. Why did Jesus take the time? Do you know that most of his activity when he walked upon the earth, even beyond his crusades and conferences, most of his time was spent in his teaching ministry. And yet he told the people that the Holy Spirit was still going to come. In spite of the fact that I taught you profitably, there is still the paraclet. There were many things Jesus taught that they did not understand. My question is, how will Jesus teach you and yet you don't understand? Who else should teach? How does this? There were many things he said that they did not understand. After his resurrection, they recall some statements and say, so this is what he meant. Do you know why? Because they were bankrupt of the spirit of revelation. Jesus himself, not a prophet. He was the one who personally taught them. But they were unfruitful in many areas. To the point that the Bible says he opened their understanding that they might understand scripture. But when the spirit of God came, many things began to make sense to them. Oh, destroy this temple and I'll build it in three days. Hear the foolish interpretation of that scripture when Jesus stood before Herod. This man said he would destroy our temple. He was talking about his body. Are we together? They said you are a king. Are you a king? 
And Pontius Pilate said, don't you know I have the power to release you? And he said, ah, 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 ah. even though I'm silent, now you've said something. You do not have any power. No man can have power except it is given to him. It is within my power to command a legion of angels. Jesus was speaking from a realm. Why was he silent? Are you seeing that those guys were interpreting all the materials? The scribes and the Pharisees, in terms of accuracy of scripture memory, none of us till date in this generation, I presume, has the kind of intellectual prowess those people had. For you to be a Pharisee, among the many conditions you needed to understand the entire Torah of heart. And yet, the one who the scripture said would come was before them and they could not see him. Are we learning? The spirit of revelation. Now watch this. Every story in the Bible, every statement in the Bible, every expression in the bible whether directly connected to salvation or not whether directly connected to the revelation of jesus or not whether directly connected to the revelation of god or not under the influence of the spirit of revelation every story in the bible can bring forth lessons and can bring forth principles that cause the believer to walk in victory did you hear what i said the profiting of scripture only comes under the influence of the spirit of revelation please write that down the profiting of scripture only comes is only derived under the influence of the spirit of revelation brain plus bible study may only profit you so far you will not be at a loss but the holistic profiting intended for you will not be achieved it is under the influence of the spirit of god that the profiting of scripture is derived so when the bible says all scripture is profitable it did not lie including all the disturbing statements that are surrounded in the bible they are not controversies per se they are controversies if approached historically they are controversies is if approached intellectually they are controversies if approached just um in terms of uh, maybe history and literature but the moment you come under the spirit of revelation veils are taken away and you will see things the way it was intended to be seen Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, the root, the shoot of an almond tree. He says, thou hast seen correctly. Means you can see wrongly. You don't have to be blind to see wrongly. Once you are not guided, you will see wrongly. Are we together? Yeah. One time Jesus prayed for a man and his eyes opened. But he saw men like trees. And he laid his hands upon his eyes again. And it opened and he saw things clearly. Now, let's talk about the four assignments of the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation has a fourfold assignment in the life of the believer with respect to helping the believer derive profit from scripture and to live an excelling Christian life. Let me repeat myself again that the spirit of revelation as a dimension of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit has a fourfold assignment in the life of the believer with respect to helping you derive profit from scripture and living an overall excellent spiritual experience. Are you ready? Number one, the first assignment of the spirit of revelation. And I hope you know by now that the spirit of revelation is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Just like every other expressions of the spirit, it is one spirit, but is that he, he has compartments and dimensions of his operation and one of those dimensions is that he can operate as the spirit of revelation the assignment of the spirit of revelation listen is number one to give you light from scripture write it down the first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to breathe upon scripture breathe upon the bible and cause that regardless what you are studying you will find light 
light meaning lessons light meaning mysteries light meaning principles from it that help you know god help you understand his eternal plan but then also helps you to live an excelling spiritual life light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like menorah light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to give you light so you can come as a historian is not wrong you can come as an intellectual it is not wrong the bible does not demand that you throw away your brain nor your knowledge of archaeology history in fact the knowledge of those areas aforementioned even become a a great support system when the spirit of god breathes upon you are we together when the holy spirit breathes upon you then all those other things now add to its profiting history is not wrong in studying scripture that's why we learn we have lexicons greek and hebrew lexicons we have all kinds of commentaries that we add together as we study scripture it takes intellect to study those things they give you contextual backgrounds are we together there is what we call in theology the principles of biblical interpretation that means how you interpret scripture for your profiting that is an intellectual guide but it is profitable that is where you learn things like the law of first mention you learn the things like the law of single mention are we together the factors that must be in place for any thought to be called doctrine not everything in the bible is doctrine even though everything is profitable comes from the latin word doctrina a body of knowledge that transforms a student to be as excellent as his master are we together are we learning church is quiet this is koinonia mm. so the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to give you light from scripture you can carry your bible and read for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him john 3 16 should not perish but have everlasting life you will stand there brilliant but confused what did i do that he died for me did i ask him to die for me did he have to die how does a creator have to die to save those he created that is an expression of weakness are you seeing the limitations of intellect he gave his one and only son put it there please if you read the bible like that the first question is he gave his one and only son by which wife by what mother you see what is happening to your mind <laughs> whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life what is everlasting life how does it change me i'm all right if you are poor it may make sense what if you are rich what is everlasting life i'm staying in a palace i have a private jet i have the what is everlasting life how does that add to me i have a phd i have an excellent life things are working well how what is everlasting life why do i need it because i look at my life and i do not see anything wrong with my life that necessitates the need for any life I have friends with military i have friends with the law enforcement agents i have friends with the legal institution what is everlasting life that will be your conclusion if the spirit of revelation does not help you but when he opens your eyes the first thing you will see is so loved so loved all those controversies fade immediately the spirit of revelation will guide your heart to the punchline of that statement so loved God so loved and every other verse and statement will just disappear and there will only be three words striking your spirit God so loved God so loved you will not know when you will break down over that scripture and begin to weep this is what he did so loved so loved that can birth an evangelical ministry because that when you stand on a crusade ground the only thing you will hear is God so loved and you can begin to weep like the patriarchs who wept and we did not understand the basis of their crying 
they were not people who were driven by arguments i was watching one of the documentaries of late billy graham and he was having um a discussion with he was going for a, a, a you know a crusade somewhere and they were having i think a radio or a session with the journalist and the rest and they asked him a very serious question they said how are we sure that your crusade here is not just to come and manipulate people into subscribing to a faith that they do not agree with and he looked and smiled and made a very profound statement he said my message is a proclamation I am proclaiming something that has been done. My, it's, a, it's a message I was sent to proclaim. I am only a messenger. My assignment is not to explain the dynamics of what happened. I am proclaiming what was done, but that in that message there is the power to heal the total man. I said, this is an evangelist indeed. He conquered nations because the spirit of revelation was upon him. So loved and you are standing there and the, the healing anointing can flow through that revelation god so loved that crippled man there god so loved the blind mama at the back of that crusade ground god so loved the stubborn drunkard that came to that crusade ground and rather than being judgmental and being angry because the spirit of god has made scripture to be profitable compassion is the response are we are, are we saying now so well on one hand what you are seeing is a controversy what is eternal life another person is seeing god so loved and from that these three statements a global ministry can rise that represents the purposes of god the first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to help you derive light from scripture the light component of scripture is what empowers you to become what scripture says the light component from scripture is what empowers you to become what scripture says. Now I understand some of the statements of our fathers where they would say just head knowledge. Men like E.W. Kenyon, Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory. They would say faith is not mental ascent. Are we together? No, it is not mental ascent. Absorbing the truth intellectually is profitable, but not enough to make you become what it says. As many as received him, he gave them power. When you receive that word, power is derived from it that helps you to become. Power to become. Power to become. Power to become. Power to become a saved person. Power to become a transformed person. Number two, what is the assignment of the spirit of revelation? Are you ready? The first assignment of the spirit of revelation we said is to give you light from scripture let me add to that and then to connect the believer to god's eternal plan the first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to give you light from scripture and then to connect the believer to god's eternal plan you need to add that to give you light from scripture but not isolated light light that connects you to god's eternal plan the same second timothy chapter 3 let's read 14 and 15. the light from scripture should primarily connect you to god's eternal plan it says but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them 15. it says and that from a child watch this Thou hast known the holy scripture, which are able to make you wise, but not just random wisdom, wise unto salvation. Wise unto salvation. Wise unto salvation. The first assignment of the spirit of revelation is helping you to draw light from scripture and then it connects you to God's eternal plan. Can I give you number two now? The second assignment of the spirit of revelation is to help you draw out light or to help you draw out lessons or principles from scripture. To help you draw out lessons or principles from scripture that empower you to walk in total victory. 
the spirit of revelation helps you to draw out lessons principles from scripture that empower you to walk in total victory that means he's not limited to just giving you light that reveals the eternal plan of God. He does not stop there. He's not just interested in your knowing the eternal plan of God. Are we together? He's interested in your holistic victory. That means if the spirit of revelation comes upon my life, either through the ministry of the teaching priest or my personal encounter with him, the first thing in order of spiritual priority is that the light that comes from scripture connects me to understand God understand the state of man or my state in light of redemption to understand jesus and to understand the gospel and his eternal plan but it does not stop there light will still come by the spirit to give me the uh, a knowledge of the lessons and the principles that i need to learn as touching every other aspect of my life finances are we together relationships how to excel in career those other aspects will not be left out in order of priority the focus of the spirit of revelation in bringing the knowledge of scripture for you is god's eternal plan and his program as captured in christ but that it also tends to providing holistic victory by bringing light as the lessons and the principles from scripture for your total wholesome victory number three what is the third assignment of the spirit of revelation are you ready listen and then write inspiring the mind of the believer to birth thoughts and ideas that translate to productivity and advancement the third assignment of the spirit of revelation is to inspire the minds of the believer so that you are able to birth thoughts and ideas that translate to productivity and advancement. Isaiah 11 and verse 2 talks about the seven spirits of God. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, the fear of the Lord. And the Bible says, verse 3, that he shall make you of quick understanding. He will do something to your understanding. Job chapter 32 and verse 8. Elihu spoke and said, There is a spirit in man. And he says the inspiration, the same word breath, of the Almighty maketh men or giveth them understanding. The third assignment of the spirit of revelation, in addition to connecting you to understand God's eternal plan, in addition to providing the lessons and the principles from scripture that make for your total wholesome victory in life and destiny that means you should not be an excellent christian and fail in other aspects of your life in order of priority you must understand god his plan yourself jesus the gospel salvation but your finances should speak your relationships you excel your influence should not be in want are we together the spirit of revelation provides the resources the lessons to learn the principles to know to become a totally victorious believer and then number three we said inspiring the minds of the believer to birth thoughts and ideas that translate to productivity and advancement please look up believers let me talk to you for a moment If your Christian experience does not translate to a context that makes unbelievers and the territory around you to acknowledge that there is value, are we together? One, one of my discussions that I'll be having the lecture in is on the role of faith in contemporary Africa. Are we together now? Does faith still hold relevance in civilization or we should throw it away? Do you know why people are asking those questions? Because if there are many churches, many of us men and women of God, but the society cannot, it is not reflected in the society, the value of being a Christian. Are we together now? 
the society, the government and the principles and the policies that are put together, they may not necessarily be spiritual, but that in the presence of believers and Christians, the God life must translate into productivity and into advancement. I am a firm believer in territorial transformation as proof that you have encountered God. These are they that turn the world upside down. Not from a fanatical standpoint. Are we together? Not from an extremist standpoint. But that you import the value system of the kingdom. And you use it to provide policies that enhance men. That's right. The kingdom. The spirit of revelation helps you to birth thoughts. To birth ideas that translate into productivity. And translates into advancement captains of industry should rise from the Christian fold are we together world changers who love Jesus haven't understood thoroughly the plan of salvation and that you've partaken of it by making Jesus Lord of your life now you are able to take advantage of the resources of intelligence and creativity by the Spirit to bet solutions that transform people that whether people are Christians or non Christians they can come to you and they can see the excellency of your spirituality speak to the growth of society this is what Jesus left the kind of Christianity we are doing in this nation and in Africa I tell you the truth we will keep flattering ourselves for a long time until the world tells us you are becoming a nuisance because our fanatism is not translating to societal transformation and you cannot speak to people in power until you can import the reality of the God life when it changes policies when it stops crime are we together when it helps to bring is and stops um you know all kinds of uh, gender inequality for want of word and all of these things if because you are a christian you treat your wife well if because you are a christian you train the people in your school and the students in your school that's christian school they pass all their work they are excellent they are well behaved you see you now have the credence to formulate a policy in honor to your faith that government can use because you have results to show this is how nations are transformed nations are not transformed through blind fanatism the reason is because fanatism is enhanced by small-mindedness. Once your mind is small and you are not global in your horizon, you will believe you are making progress. But there are powers that only understand God as profit to society. Did you hear what I said? You must translate yourself that they can say because a church was planted here, the crime rate in this area just went down. And you can literally use statistics to confirm that from the time this church was planted, on account of the spiritual value that is being communicated from that man of God, that woman of God, that priest, that apostle, that prophet, it has translated to a decline in prostitution. It has translated to a decline in irresponsibility. Men are now taking their place. Families are mended. Are we together? People are getting jobs. All kinds of crime is reducing. Nations and governments will call you and say we are not interested necessarily in the God you serve. But we want to know what policy runs your organization that produces a kind of profit. Now you have the audacity to say my policies are derived from my convictions. And they will still listen to you because the results are there to show. Your name is to be hallowed. Listen, the church is the light of the world. We are not a congregation of dummies bound by blind fanatism with no profitability to society. God is helping our generation to redefine the value of the Christian faith. We are not a news and so civilization. We may pray in tongues. The world may not understand the praying in tongues. But the creativity that comes from that praying in tongues, they will not deny it. Are we together now? Yeah. This is what God is helping us to do. To penetrate systems and structures. To translate spirituality and give it a context of intelligence that provides value. Value that is applicable in nation building. Value that is applicable in terms of human resources. 
Christians should not be part of the membership of a church and after five years they are not productive they are not helping themselves they are beggars are we together waiting for palliatives what then is the value of the gospel if you sell me that kind of gospel I will reject you in order of priority it should be connecting to the eternal plan but the spiritual the spirit of revelation empowers us if everybody in this place is able to feed 10 people can that bring impact to our society do you think that it 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 garnishes it brings beauty to your spirituality last year i had the honor of speaking at the world conference of the full gospel businessmen's fellowship and one of the things i shared with the people there thankfully most or all of them are renowned businessmen billionaires millionaires captains of industry controllers of systems and structures but that most of them if not all of them at least they call upon the name of the lord and one of the things that i taught there was the wisdom of egypt even though moses was called to be a deliverer part of his qualification was that god sent him to egypt to learn the wisdom of the egyptians let me submit to you there are many Christians who cannot be good governors. There are many Christians who cannot be good presidents. There are many Christians who cannot be good ambassadors. Do you know why? Fanatism without translating spirituality with intelligence in a way that brings profit to society. Chances are excellent now that if I become some kind of position as a Christian, you see, if my mind does not receive a superior kingdom orientation to know that my jurisdiction is the globe revealing Christ but doing that in a way that is not just fanatical are we together that you can be able to statistically prove the value of my knowing God you see it is because in this side of Africa we don't have value for statistics we don't have value for reviews are we together now in many parts of the world and if God gives you grace to broaden your horizon one of the things you will learn is that people don't believe nonsense when you tell people something works they will tell you bring your facts and your figures that even though the context of what you are communicating is spiritual if God intended for that gospel to reach men you should show me statistically if you cannot show me how they are translated spiritually show me the moral excellence that was derived that 10 people because they came to Christ society has become better that an Ambroba called Barabbas that he encountered Jesus Christ and because of that show me statistically the Bible has a statistical proof of transformation one prostitute met Jesus and as a result a whole city was converted one madman met Jesus and a whole city was converted Jesus was not a fanatic he transformed people. Are we together? He was strong on his convictions as far as representing the Father is concerned. But he penetrated systems and structures. Economic systems felt his impact. Religious systems felt his impact. Family life systems felt his impact. Are we together? Intellectual systems felt his impact. He entered the temple and he sanitized all kinds of misuse of God's house. This is Jesus for you. He spoke among people and they saw the wisdom in the things that he said. All those who fought Jesus were people who were living in denial, not ignorance. His statement was clear and unmistakable. Nicodemus came testifying on behalf of the scribes and the Pharisees and said, we know. We, are, we know that you are a man sent from God. It's only that because you've won the heart of the people, it has disturbed us too much. We have to create a formula to dampen your influence. And he died, but he rose. This time around, we are the fruits of his resurrection, extending his value system. I have taught you that the gospel is not only a message that saves. The gospel is a value system that can translate society. All the societies today that we celebrate at the core of any territorial development is their value systems and value systems are derived from convictions. It is convictions that translate to value systems that translates to policies that if enacted, they transform people.
Moral excellence is first a mindset, a value system that translates to a policy. The spirit of revelation breathes upon your mind. Is someone learning? The church should not be the only one calling us. The Bible says men will say, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Are we together? That somebody who is a non-Christian, because of the excellency of your understanding and your applying scripture and the corresponding results, undeniable, that flows through your life. Someone who is a non-Christian can come to you like Nicodemus in the night and say, listen, I don't love Jesus. I don't believe in God, but I cannot deny the fact that you're being a Christian. The impact of your salvation experience, the impact and the dexterity of your spiritual understanding, the intelligence that has come from your spirituality is compelling. Can you teach me his ways? It's easy to win poor people on a crusade ground, but you are going to win kings and nations and territories by importing spirituality to a context whose value can be seen and felt in society. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations See Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory said this and I quote. He said, leadership is not about maintaining followers. Transformational leaders turn followers to leaders and leaders to agents of transformation. The end product of the journey to your spirituality is not fanatism and extremism. I repeat, the end point at the back of your journey to knowing God understanding salvation and utilizing scripture alongside the ministry of the spirit of revelation is not to produce a profitless fanatic no an intelligent god will not design such a system translating spirituality to a context that can lead to personal and territorial transformation i refer you to my message commanding salvation over territories you will become a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ you will go back to your place of work do you know why God does not promote men in the kingdom their value will be useless to society their fanatism will only become a distraction to many and even lead many through anger away from God not towards him so god would rather them remain at a level promotion comes when profit can be derived many of you are administrators and you are business people talk to me intelligent people do you promote someone who will not bring profit to the organization part of the principles that you use to promote people is you check their performance before that time am i right on that their performance in terms of delivery in terms of representing the values of the company when you see that these people can be a greater representation you promote them that is how it happens too in the kingdom when when God can derive profit from your life, he lifts you so that you will help men see him in a way that properly represents him. The higher you rise, the more confusion you can bring to the name of the Lord if you don't know him. Did you hear what I said? The higher you rise, the more misrepresentation and the more confusion you can bring to the Christian faith and to the name of the Lord. That's why there are people, no matter how they pray and fast, they, are, they will not rise beyond certain things. There is a kind of knowledge they need to take away from their minds. And there is a kind of knowledge about God they need to have so that their rising becomes profitable for the kingdom. Imagine that God gives you access 
to be invited by the president of a nation as a Christian and you are given 15 minutes to do a national broadcast and you are given the liberty to communicate the matters that relate to faith and then in 15 minutes you can cause war between two countries because of an abuse of influence did you hear what I said I'm not training you to get a job I'm not training you to get food you don't need to be born again to have that the training you are receiving is turning you to a global wonder this is why God is re-engineering your understanding so that he can invite you to the gates of nations there are many believers today if God ever gave them an opportunity to speak his purposes especially within a secular environment there will be wars that will last years because the diplomacy of representing the love of God you will sell the controversies in the kingdom and so many things and create enemies around the kingdom to a point that the government becomes embarrassed for honoring you and your your testimony becomes a statistical fact that they should fight Christians in that nation Are we together? There are many nations today that have been shot towards the gospel because individuals who were ill-prepared had access to the audience and had access to the ears of kings and because they were ill-trained and ill-prepared, they did not know how to, to translate spirituality to a context that brought profiting to the gospel. They misrepresented God and credited it to fanatism. The result was that doors shut for the gospel. But a change is coming to the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. When you give your life to Jesus, you don't become a dummy. You give your life to Jesus and encounter the spirit of revelation. Albeit our focus is not just on prosperity and education and secular advancement. When that becomes the entire scope of our pursuit, it is another kind of error. The centrality of the believer's pursuit must be God, the revelation of God, the state of man. Are we together? If they ask you to summarize the Christian faith and you say, well, God wants to prosper you. He just wants to make you great. You misrepresented God. If you have five minutes to talk about God, what you should talk about is his love connected to salvation. Are we together now? You don't waste that five minutes you have talking about prosperity or advancement. It's a misrepresentation of God. If you have five minutes to articulate your faith, your emphasis should be the central focus of what becomes a pillar of your faith. But if time is extended, you let people know that when he comes, he affects the total man including your finances and the way it happens is that the spirit of revelation can make profiting to come out of scripture can i give you number four hmm. breathe lord breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe lord breathe lord breathe breathe Upon my life, I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest. Your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Hallelujah. Somebody called me, he sent me a text one time. I may not be surprised if he's following. After we put this our agro program and programs to bless the business people and he called me and he said sir his exact words he said pastor sir you don't know me I'm a Muslim I'm not a Christian but we're having a discussion about you and the part that touched me was when I saw that you were not just complaining and that you were doing the bits that you were to train people he said, I was touched. I'm not a Christian. Probably he's following. He said, I was touched. 
and then he said my wife listens to you this is somebody who is aware a non-christian my wife listens to you and i will not stop her because i have seen the value that thing touched me <laughs> hallelujah now most of you don't come from the north so you will not understand the implication of that statement you would have you have to live in the north to understand what it means for a man to say listen i'm not a christian but we discussed you here and based on what didn't he see healing the sick in koinonia that's none of his business didn't he see the dishing out of greek and hebrew the point of profiting was when spirituality was translated now when you say god is love to his mind and the mind of his wife they can say yes even though i may not agree with your faith i cannot deny the value and the profiting that your spirituality has produced listen do you know why billy graham was one of the most respected preachers he did not waste his time in blind childish and mediocre debates his his idea was to understand scripture with the same he was not a fanatic billy graham was not the person who was jumping on stage like some of us but the intelligence he gave to spirituality brought great honor to the name of the lord a documentary about Billy Graham shows, and I'm saying that because it's, it's the, the documentary is there, that the former Queen of England, now late, one time she was in a lot of distress that had to do with her personal life. Among the many people she reached out to for advice and help and counsel was Billy Graham. There were other men of God in Europe, but she reached out to Billy Graham, history says. Are we together? There are many people who will not even study this. All we know is God will do it. And intelligent people look at us and say, what kind of people are these? When you want kings to call you, prepare to talk to them. Once you are talking to mediocre and mean men, and yet praying that God takes you to talk to kings, God cannot be mocked. You reap according to the quality of the seed you sow. You sow mediocrity, you remain with mediocre. So she reached out to Billy Graham. The documentary tells us and Billy Graham sent her a text with one scripture comforting her he said I understand that things happen like this and on account of her royalty and the things that she should understand that she's human and things happen like this and then he sent a scripture of comfort and then the secretary replied Billy Graham and told him how comforted she was on account of that that was why no government could fight him even North Korea allowed him to preach there because there were governmental policies that a single nation cannot manipulate and if a parliament there are christians who will be called to speak to un there are christians who will be called to speak to african union as single individuals that on account of something you say and a correct representation of a king of the kingdom void of blind fanatism ignorance and mediocrity you translate spirituality to excellence excellence that cannot be denied even those who are not saved will call you and say we may not respect your God but translate his value systems into a policy that translates to nation building. What you see that we are doing is only the beginning of a fire that can never be quenched. <laughs> breathe Lord, breathe, breathe Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. receive pray I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Listen, look at me. Many will call you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many will call you and say, Listen, 
this organization is in confusion we hear you are a christian and we like the context of your spirituality how much can we pay you come and help reorder this organization use the same value system that made your church dexterous import it to our organization and you tell them the condition is that you allow me hold a three-day crusade in your area they say we will sponsor it if it will help us listen i tell you the way evangelism will happen in the days coming will shock you it will be governments backing individuals because the profit factor of spirituality we will see the profit of spirituality to nation building that when we are praying in tongues it's not just a fanatic jumping up and down as we are jumping up and down something is leaving heaven and entering your spirit when you have the orientation god will give you the influence did you hear what i said when you have the orientation that represents the purposes of god god will give you the influence no man can promote himself no promotion comes from god your assignment is to contend with the spirit of revelation let him breathe upon your spirit breathe upon your mind breathe upon your body breathe upon your understanding erode that mediocre understanding erode that mundane understanding that small mindedness that is focused on self that small mindedness that is focused on extremism and fanatism it will not win the nations for Jesus learn from Billy Graham Billy Graham remains an inspiration for me today because of the way he manifested the God life what a pride to the Christian faith in life and in death what a pride to heaven in life and in death Billy Graham made men love Jesus he made men love the Christian faith he didn't shout like we did he didn't run around like we did but he transported spirituality the Holy Ghost walked in him and he brought the gospel in a context that saved nations saved leaders he prayed for leaders some of those leaders gave access today some of the access we have to the nations today came because of the conviction of the men who were imparted by his ministry let me tell you this africa we must tame our excesses we must tame our idea of spirituality most of what we call spirituality is fanatism and extremism that misrepresents Jesus we will keep making a mess of the continent before the world and bring reproach to the name of the Lord until we understand what the faith life and the faith pursuit is about there are still over seven billion people there about to come to Jesus Christ in preparing my lecture notes for the lectures coming it made me to learn a lot I explored statistics of all kinds derived ideas from intellectuals from the economic realm and several people like that just in preparing the piece of you know thoughts that we'll be sharing and I learned again how far behind we are in terms of our spiritual orientation I tell you is the reason why there are more churches is the reason why there are more of us men of God and yet you see that that penetrating power the gatekeepers have not seen the Jesus they are looking for did you hear what I said the gatekeepers that allow for a free flow of the gospel are looking for a kind of Jesus and a kind of spiritual orientation we have not yet presented. We must grow out of our petty small mindedness and look globally and see to it that there is a burden upon us for the nations. It will not happen through extremism and fanatism. Again, learn from Billy Graham. Billy Graham is an extreme model and a worthy influence. Every believer that knows God and loves kingdom come, evangelist or otherwise, among the many followers you should follow, I tell you, I recommend for you. He is a man. I believe he has his imperfections. I believe he has his limitations. But he's a commendable model to guide your understanding. He is a very intelligent capture of translating spirituality to territorial transformation 
Let me give you the final one and then we'll pray. This is koinonia. Hmm. Number four. What is the assignment of the spirit of revelation with respect to deriving profit from scripture, kingdom advance, and destiny actualization? Are you ready? The spirit of revelation activates the various prophetic dimensions in the believer. The spirit of revelation activates the various prophetic dimensions in the believer. The spirit of revelation activates the various prophetic dimensions in the believer. Dreams, visions, word of knowledge, prophecy. There is a prophetic dimension to every believer. Whether you are called to the office of a prophet or not. The prophetic dimension is how you are able to interact with the spirit realm like you have learned here. Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29. Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29. Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward, he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. How many? All flesh. He says, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. The young men shall see visions. Uh -huh. And upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. The unifying factor is that regardless the age range, everyone had a prophetic experience, a dream, a vision, some kind of encounters. The spirit of revelation is responsible for activating the various prophetic dimensions in the believer. So as much as I've spoken about kingdom advance, next week is a miracle service. The word of knowledge will still come. The, the manifestations of the spirit, the prophetic will still come. Are we together? The Holy Spirit helps us to manifest that prophetic dimension within us. Powerful. Jesus, by the spirit of revelation, looks and right from where he is, he says, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathaniel comes to him and says, you do not even know me. He said, no, this is not all intellect. While you were under the tree, I saw you. Ah, he was amazed. He said, Nathaniel, just because I told you this, you are surprised. He said, you will see greater things than this. You with your own eyes, your prophetic being open, you will see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. There is an advantage we have believers. Our lives is not always spiritual, even though there is a spiritual dimension. Are we together? Our lives is not always intellectual, even though there is an intellectual dimension. There is a prophetic dimension to every believer. God can show you things to come. And when he, the spirit of truth, is come, the Bible says that he will guide you into all truth. And he will show you the things to come. He will show you the things to come. He will show you the things to come. The Bible says no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. He says, but the spirit has revealed it to us. He has revealed it to us through his spirit for the spirit searched all things even the deep things of god and the bible says the reason why he does all of those things is that he would let us know the things that are freely given to us say i'm a spiritual person one more time say i'm a spiritual person the spirit of revelation is at work in me so he activates that prophetic dimension that is the reason why to the glory of God, when all the lectures and the discourses are done by night, mm, the Bible says, while shepherds watch their flocks by night. So you can be a lecturer by day and then you wear that regalia and let the devil know that I did not just come with a lecture notes. I came in the spirit and the power to dislodge darkness, to stir up a fire for the kingdom. Mm. Believers, hear me. This Bible.
contains wholesome profiting to every believer this bible i repeat contains wholesome profiting to the believer but that the bible in itself is not flawless archaeologically the bible is not flawless historically the bible is not flawless linguistically in fact the bible is not is not flawless in terms of the accuracy and the facts of the things presented but that the moment the bible becomes channeled from a lens of the revelation of god the revelation of man's state without god the revelation of jesus as the savior and remedy to man and creation are we together the revelation of the gospel and the revelation of salvation the bible becomes accurate regardless what you are reading and regardless the imperfections that your eye may observe there is no degree of imperfection in the bible that sustains the ability to derive a believer who stores it is by the spirit of revelation did you hear what i said you uh, to, to, the, to you can never never be deluded into error if you allow the spirit of revelation to guide your understanding and your interpretation of scripture no you can read the book of leviticus and all you see are all kinds of sacraments old practices and it may not make sense to you but because the spirit of revelation rests upon you among the many words and you sanctify the instruments of the temple and make sure this one expression will stand out and light comes from it i come in the volume of the book it was written about me to do your will I come in the volume of the book, it was written about me, to do your will, O oh God. I come in the volume of the book, it was written about me, to do your will, O oh God. One more time. I come in the volume of the book, it was written about me to do your will, O oh God. It says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. You know what a sign is? A sign is a pointer. A sign does not point itself. It tells you you are close to reality. The assignment of a sign is to let you know you are not far from the object of your pursuit. So when God makes you a sign and a wonder, the requirement to be a sign and a wonder is that you must be close to God. So that when people see you, not too far from you, they see him. No matter whatever may come my way, how far I'll follow, I'll follow, I'll follow, no matter what. it on my heart to teach you this because you see my life changed not just when I honored scripture when the spirit of revelation came upon my life the word of God made sense that the word of God in spite of the supposed controversies in spite of the personalities in spite of the obvious transition in knowledge that happened to some of the authors, it did not disrupt its ability to present the program of Christ completely. 
let me remind you tonight again that the accuracy of scripture does not come from its archaeological presentation the accuracy of scripture does not come from its historical presentation the accuracy of scripture does not even come from its linguistic presentation or the interpretation prowess no it comes from its ability to maneuver through the imperfections and still present the program of God with precision and accuracy and that in order of priority the compass the navigation point for every believer must be to know that the primary assignment of scripture is not for business the primary assignment of scripture is not for marriage the primary assignment of scripture are we together is not for prosperity the primary assignment of scripture is not for increase is not for greatness the primary assignment of scripture is to help men understand god understand the state of man outside god understand jesus are we together now as a representation of the father's love to man understand the gospel and understand salvation in its entirety when that becomes the focal point the true north in your pursuit then the bible will be accurate regardless what it is and then when you have that sorted then the spirit of revelation in partnership with any part of scripture can help you derive profit and value that attends to any other area of your life so you will find yourself in addition to knowing God excelling in business by scripture excelling in your marriage by scripture rising in influence in scripture intellectual advantage by scripture are we together your organization becoming dexterous and profitable you are a leader with a difference deriving principles and lessons from scripture this is how the spirit of revelation operates the spirit of revelation does not leave us as fanatics as extremists no it translates the value of spirituality to a context that leads to our own salvation our wholesome victory and then can help us extend the love the value system and the intelligence of the kingdom to all and sundry this is what we are called to do this is what we must position ourselves to do so in the midst of the falling and rising in the midst of the spending hours and praying profitably so in the midst of the burning of night candles reading scripture in the midst of consulting other materials lexicons and commentaries and concordances you must have this at the back of your mind that your compass for navigating the thoughts of god when you promote your wanting to become a businessman from scripture beyond god jesus man and salvation the bible will no longer profit you the mistake we make is not that all the other aspects we are pursuing from scripture are not supposed to bless us but they are not supposed to be the focal point the focal point in the study of scripture is the testimony of the love of god revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus man and creation being the object of that sacrifice are we together and the entire mercy plan is captured in what we call the gospel captured in what we call salvation when you have that as a pillar every other blessing that comes from scripture becomes an addition not a replacement so the idea is not to stop deriving business profit from scripture marital profit from scripture societal profit from scripture intellectual profit from scripture no that would be error but that we must return back to the focal purpose of scripture scripture never contradicts itself with respect to revealing god salvation the state of man and jesus regardless the complexities around the authors the the lives of the authors the bible tells us that god prevailed over the people such that every information there the richest capture and the richest expression of accuracy in scripture is with respect to the knowledge of god and the plan of salvation 
so the next time you read your bible you can use various verses in scripture to attend to various areas of your life you are not in error but when you want to study the bible for growth don't study it as a business manual study it as a spiritual book that intends to reveal god reveal your state reveal jesus reveal god's program when you understand that you will never be in error regardless what you find there please rise up on your feet no matter whatever may come my way i'll follow i'll follow no matter what to hold hands with someone by your left and right if you can we're going to pray two serious prayers in this place the first prayer is you are going to cry for a fresh baptism of the spirit of revelation Paul said that I may know him he knew many things but his focus was him not that I may know it there were many it's he knew he it was Paul that brought order to the program of God order to how many things be done but he said that i may know him let that be your prayer by the spirit of revelation lord help me to know you help me to understand jesus help me to understand your prophetic program as far as the gospel and salvation is concerned someone is praying praying with seriousness praying with sincerity from the depth of your heart if you are a man of god pray your members are at the mercy of your understanding pray no matter how much you have deviated there is still room to square up your understanding for the sake of those you lead and for the sake of your own growth go ahead and pray the spirit of revelation comes to our lives connecting us to god's eternal plan helping us to understand the gospel to understand salvation and to understand the program of god the spirit of revelation drawing out lessons cautions drawing out principles from scripture that help the believer to walk in total victory the spirit of revelation inspiring the spirits and the minds of believers giving us the ability to birth thoughts to birth ideas that empower us to be productive that empower us to sponsor advancement at a personal level at a societal level at a territorial level the spirit of revelation activating the prophetic dimension that is inherent in every believer helping us to take advantage of the prophetic resources we have at our disposal to live excelling Christian lives, dreams, visions, revelations, the prophetic. I choose the way of the Lord. I want to establish the second prayer point. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. One more time, sing it from your heart. For the way. Is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. The second prayer point, listen please. The second prayer point is a burden in my heart that I'm sharing with you. We are going to pray for the body of Christ. Lord, let the spirituality in the body of Christ 
translate to profit and value that exalts Jesus and frontiers the cause of the kingdom. We are tired of fanatism. We are tired of extremism. Are we together? We are tired of the interruptions that our human nature is bringing to the program of God. You are going to pray and say, Lord, breathe upon us. We are available vessels. Let our praying in tongues, let our fastings, let our Bible studies, let our consecrations translate to value that our world can see. Christians and non-Christians, governments, leaders, heads of state, captains of industry, that they can see the profit point of serving God through our lives. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray for the body of Christ. Pray for the body of Christ. We are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but it is put on a lampstand, a candlestick, and it gives light to all who are there. Take a minute and pray. We pray for the body of Christ in Nigeria. We pray for the body of Christ in Africa. We pray for the body of Christ in Europe. The body of Christ in America. The body of Christ in Asia. In the name of Jesus, let us come as a corporate people into a season where the love, the values, the character, the power, the wisdom, the profitability that comes from being a Christian, the profitability, the value that comes by being a person of faith, let it be translated to nation building. Let it be translated to territorial transformation. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, if we do not restore the correct context of approaching the Christian faith, we stand a risk, we stand a risk of deviating a whole generation towards a sincere path that may purport to helping us find God and live meaningful lives and will leave many in disappointment. When you are young, a lot of mistakes in your approach to knowing God may not tell because the consequences are not immediate. But as you grow older in leadership, in age and in life, are we together? The wrong perception about God begins to tell on your life, tell on your children, tell on your organization. You can afford to be in error as a young man and the difference will not show. Are we together? But as God begins to help you, as you become a leader, in any capacity, you begin to see the effect of your ill or lack of complete understanding of the ways of God. It will deviate institutions, deviate individuals, deviate men. That is the reason why sometimes people purport that the church is where intelligent people come and become dummies. It ought not to be so. A preacher should not make people fools because they came to church. Are we together? So that parents and families will not stop their children from coming to church because they cannot see the relevance of the things that we teach. We stand a risk, I tell you this prophetically, if we do not reorder and redefine spirituality and respect our territories as we communicate our Christian persuasions, let us not take the intelligence of the people who are loyal to us for granted. Are we together? The church should not be an expression of caricature, a venting of mediocrity and small-mindedness. We must respect the territories wherein God has planted us. And we must respect the fact that the people who come to us 
are looking for God are intelligent people and have alternatives. A man should not carry his wife and children and family as a CEO who loves the Lord and come and sit down under the mentorship of a man of God only to learn nonsense. Are we together? And then at the end, the man looks stupid, his wife looks stupid, the children look stupid. They cannot see the value of their spirituality. Their lives begin to go down from the day they become members. The principles that brought excellence, intelligence, integrity, and power to their lives, those policies are no longer there. It ought not to be so. Are we together? And so I want to encourage you, go back and listen to this message. Are we together? Listen to this message again. Listen to this message again. Listen to this message again. Pray with it. Download it and listen. Don't assume because you were here, you understood it. Share it in love with anybody interested in learning God and living out spirituality to a context that profits the program of God and profits the society. Ignoring the society wherein you are planted is selfishness. You must factor in the fact that you came to that society as an object of God's mercy. You must factor in the effect of your spirituality or otherwise and the effect of your orientation on their overall well-being. Extremism and fanatism is the number one religious problem across our continent and plaguing other people. It is extremism that has produced all shades of error that right now governments are grappling to manage at the back of the perpetrators of this thing is a supposed sincere pursuit but it's ended up bringing all kinds of terrorist sects and all of that at the back of anything that destroys society is an orientation and those who perpetrate it believe that they are communicating truth or pleasing some kind of deity somewhere it's important to restore Christianity spirituality the faith practice as intended by god have you been blessed tonight very powerful we must we must have a thorough knowledge about the promises of god his promises represents his commitment please listen when when come if i give this gentleman a job Please look up. If I give this gentleman a job in a serious company, I usually would give him, can I have a paper? I will give him a letter of employment. Is that true? And usually that letter of employment will state his roles, his responsibility to that company or organization. Are we together? But then contained in it also will be a... a a rundown of the organization's commitments to him. You will see it written here that you are allowed by that company to have a particular period for your leave. That this is the cumulative of your salary. is 500,000, but then is broken into this and that and that. And that the company will take responsibility for your health insurance, etc., etc. There are terms. Now, if this man is not aware, something the company can do, he will go and pay for it and waste his money. It is important you are aware. Listen to me. The knowledge of God's promises is not for baby Christians. The knowledge of God's promises are for receivers. If you are ready to receive, you must be aware. We have this ugly mentality that every time we talk about the promises of God is just for children, baby Christians. The promises of God represent his oath, his commitment. His power always responds to his promises. This is what I have decided that I will do. There is a promise in scripture that guarantees for a bright future for me. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Let me show you how you engage these things. It says there are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring me a future, not a past. A future. God may not bring my past, but he can bring my future. So this is my understanding. To bring me a future and an expected end. If I see what does not look like God, I reject it as my future. I shift it to my past 
And I say, Lord, where is my future? Because your word declares that the end must be an expected one. This is not what I expect. So this cannot be the end. Let me show you how to engage the promises of God. Not just to read like an unintelligent person. No. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, that they are thoughts of peace. It helps me to know what to fight against and what to leave. Whatever cannot bring peace to my life must not be of God. They are thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. Not necessarily progress. The path may not look like it, but your peace will still remain. Thoughts of peace. I use the peace of God to gauge what He is involved in. Regardless of the results. Thoughts of peace. To bring me an expected end. A future. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. He was speaking to young Jeremiah. Amplified says, For I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. My reputation is upon that word. And I am alert, I am active, watching over my word to perform it. Are we together? Yes. The Bible tells me that I will be the head and not the tail. It didn't say I'll be the head when I'm in America. It didn't say I'll be the head when I'm in England. No, he says I am the head. Head everywhere is head everywhere. I am the head. He didn't call it a localized head. He didn't call it a territorial head. He says you are the head and you are not the tail. He says you are above and not beneath. I believe it. I sincerely do. I truly believe it with all my heart. So every time I approach life, I already know my position. I'm not asking life to tell me. I go aware and I insist until it becomes it. Hallelujah. Yes. You can hold on to the promises of God. Please listen to me. You have to understand this. Psalm 112, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands. If you are not that man, leave that scripture. But if you are that man, read on. You see that? If you, if you fear the Lord and you delight greatly in his commands, then you read on. The Bible says that, verse 2, his seed. That means he will have seed. This already is a weapon against barrenness. His seed. His seed. You carry your medical report and lift it to God. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. There's no giving birth to dull children. There's no giving birth to children who everybody is helping. No! Has nothing to do with tribal affiliation. Please understand this. If you are too big to engage the world this way, you will never have results in your lifetime. It's a formula that has no exceptions. Hallelujah. His seed shall be mighty, not in heaven, on earth. Upon earth. Then it says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. The next verse says wealth and riches. He won't look for them. They will be in his house. There is a state that will attract these possibilities. And yet the Bible says his righteousness will endure forever. The part of the scripture you believe is the part that works for you. Just because you are holding a Bible does not mean it will work. You must believe God is alive. God is alive. His word. You must be aware of his promises. His covenant. I love our little children here. You see them all the time. For some reason, they believe. That as Abba, they should not be hungry. Those children never come and ask me, do you have biscuits? As soon as, koinonia starts for them as soon as we share the grace. Now, as far as we are concerned, they are sleeping. This is service for adults. As soon as we share the grace, they wake up and come boldly. And sometimes they ask me to bring down my head. I'm the one who carried my big mouth and said I am father. So they say, father, bend down. A son wants to talk and they say I'm hungry. And I look at the welfare, I say, please bail me out. 
their confidence is based on the integrity you approach God with confidence not arrogance confidence there is a difference confidence I know hmm. you're my hiding place my safe refuge my treasure Lord you are my friend and king anointed one most holy because you're with me because you're with me because I will not fear. What can man do to you when God is Because you're with me. I raise that song because God is ministering to someone. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. I will The Jesus I saw is a real God. When I saw Jesus, the majesty that comes from Him will make you a fool to doubt Him. Mm. Majesty. You will know that He is a man only because He chose to. But this one is not a man. He was not, no, 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 the Creator. There is something I want the Word of God to do to you. All this up today, you talk like you're a Christian. Tomorrow, you talk as if you forgot that you gave your life to Christ. No. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Persuaded. The invincibility of his counsel. The forcefulness of his word to manipulate life till I win. Becomes my confidence. Have you seen politicians rig election? You are not supposed to win. But someone interrupts the process. They return the ballot boxes. They stamp it where they should not stamp. And declare you a winner. That's exactly how God lifts men. The question is. Who writes the rules for him. Whether he's right or wrong. Based on what parameter do you say God is right or wrong? If I choose to sleep in the parlor, am I wrong? Is it not my house? Listen, when God insists for a man to rise, step out of the way. Because let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you will find every reason why it should not happen. God's idea of justice is not obedience to a law that was put by man. God's idea of justice is the result looking like what he wants. Please, we have to know who God is. Understand this thing about God. That's why his ways look unfair. When you understand God's word, you will know how to engage things. You will know how to change things. The knowledge of his promises. Still under the second point. Then the knowledge of his ways, his methodologies. Please listen to me. Listen to me. This is where many, many of our hardship comes from. This is where most of our pain is derived from. Ignorance of his ways. We may know his promises, but we need to know his methodologies. 
Are we together? Mike is playing this keyboard based on a formula. You come and sit down on this keyboard and you'll be surprised how it will disobey you. Not because the keyboard was programmed to disobey. Your ignorance. Are we together now? The potentials of this keyboard is at the mercy of your understanding. Listen, God has methods. Any method is not his method. You have to understand this. The knowledge of God's methodologies is your bailout system out of the wickedness in this life. There is a way he leads men. There is a way he restores. There is a way he turns things around. There is a way he heals. Ah. There is a way he honors. You must know. You must know this. There is a way he anoints. You have to know the ways of God. There is a way to make God vulnerable. He has vulnerabilities. God has a weak point, if I would use that word. You must know what it is. Ah. It was David that knew this. Oh God, if you kill me now, who will praise you? Who will serve you? And God said, what do I do with this man? What do I do with this man? God gives him an option and he says, God, deal with me by yourself. Don't leave me to my enemies. These people do not have mercy, but I know you. There is one thing I can tell you that will make you change your mind. Just agree that you are the one who will deal with me. Hallelujah. There are things that if you know about God and His ways, your life will look terribly unfair. God. We must know His ways. There is a way He prospers. And this is one of the major reasons why many of us are here. This issue of the blessings of the Lord. The sting is getting harder by the day. And we must be honest to say, Lord, there has to be a way. Abba, there has to be a way. The cost of looking for money is not for the saints. To, for a man to spend his whole life, we call it making ends meet. It's not a good theology. It's a terrible way of walking. You will never be... It takes time to know God. It takes time to impact a generation. And that time can be occupied looking for money. It's a cost. You have to know God's methodologies. Please listen to this. And in the kingdom, you don't measure wealth by the quality of the clothes you wear and the shoes. How much can you give to the kingdom without it affecting you? That's the measure of your wealth. Not, not what I have. I can take a flight here. I can wear one shoe, one cloth. No. No. Is God helping us tonight? I told you that the miracle service starts from the word. The word is powerful. It constructs your understanding. So that whatever you receive will stay. The knowledge of his ways. I've spent my life like a spiritual archaeologist. Searching for the ways of God. It's risky to live your life based on opinions. It's risky to live your life hoping you are right. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. It is the end that shows you that you are wrong. There is a way to do ministry and get results. There is a way to do ministry and rubbish, rubbish yourself. Begging everywhere for money, conniving, telling lies, prophesying nonsense. There is a way to impact a generation. There is a methodology for influence that has nothing to do with tribal advantage. Believe me when I say this. When you find it, it will show you have found it. The ways of God. The Bible says he made known to Moses his ways. It is a blessing when God shows you his ways. Some of us are here today. The real miracle that you need to receive is the miracle of understanding. 
You may not be sick, oh, but it looks like I keep trying. I knock this door, it does not open. I knock that door, it does not open. Here's what the Bible says. Walk ye circumspectly, accurately, as wise, not as unwise, redeeming the time. How do you redeem the time? By being wise circumspectly that means minimize trial and error in your life the time it takes to correct mistakes is too long so make sure you get it once as much as possible is a way to redeem time is god speaking to us let me end by just teaching briefly on something i wrote here how blessings manifest write it down i just i just i came with 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 a burden in my heart listen believers the the fivefold or fourfold as you want to call it was designed to bring the body not just to receive miracles but to bring us to a point of accuracy there are things in your faith life at a level that should not be concerned again because the key that opens that door and keeps it open has been delivered to you are we together how blessings manifest first john or john 1 14 john chapter 1 the gospel of john the first verse the first chapter, the 14th verse. The Bible says, And the word was made flesh. Let's read it together. One, two, read. And the word was made flesh. Stop there. Read it one more time. And the word was made flesh. Let's continue. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace. So the word can become flesh. The word flesh there means it found expression in our realm. The word can have a material equivalent. The word can come as health manifested. The word can come as lifting manifested. Please hear me. The word does not just remain in the realm of the spirit. The word can and should become flesh. It didn't say the word became a human body. <clears throat> the word became flesh. It's a principle. But there is a technology. The word becoming flesh. The word in the realm of the spirit may not profit you in this realm. You need it to become flesh. Then you will behold the glory. Revelations 22. Verse 17. Shabbat Kabbalah And the spirit and the bride say come and let him that hear it say come hmm. and the spirit and the bride say come the spirit and the bride in this case who is the man of god says come then the one they spoke to who hears will agree and say come Follow me. The spirit and the bride say be healed. The one in need of the healing hears the spirit and the bride saying be healed and agrees. Be healed. The word becoming flesh. I'm showing you the technology. The spirit and the bride say rise. That means when a man is speaking, he's not speaking alone. He's standing as a bride. But there is the spirit. But the hearer must also say what the Spirit said. The Spirit and the bride say, let it be over. The hearer who came for koinonia, hears the Spirit and the bride say, be over. And he repeats, it is over. That echo is what, this is the same thing that happened in Ezekiel chapter 37. When you turn there, the Spirit, listen very carefully spoke just because there was no one there that you see does not mean no one repeated it the spirit and the bride so the lord brings a word and says that yoke is over you receive it and say this yoke is over so says the spirit and so says the bride
Do you believe what I'm telling you? And then you will marvel and wonder at how things begin to change. He says, and there was a, a sound. A sound and bones. Now imagine if Ezekiel had to search for the bones one by one. No. There is ease when you understand the ways of God. Just agree with the spirit and the bride and commit God's integrity. The bones will find themselves. Were they not created in the first place? The spirit and the bride. So the Lord says, hear me. It's time to rise. And the spirit and this bride of his says, come. And you believe it. And you also say, come. Because you are the one that has heard. You hear that word. They heard the word, but the word did not profit them. Where did the word come from? From the spirit and the bride. But the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Hearing has a lot to do with your receiving. You must hear. It's good to see, but you must also hear. And you must participate in the result as proof that you believe. Are we together? Now let me tell you the three main ways that God's blessings, the general technologies that the spirit and the bride comes, but all our solutions, please listen, all the solutions we search for come in only three dimensions. Number one, Every solution that you seek, including that which you seek tonight, will come by the ministry of the anointing. The ministry of the anointing. The ministry of the anointing. You can put there the supernatural. There are dimensions of the workings of God that require the supernatural straight up. Like the healing of infirmity. Someone is here now, for instance, maybe with cancer. Or maybe a problem. You don't need any counseling. There's no counseling there. You need the supernatural. Someone is here and thinks, you know, you need the hand of God directly. It's the first way that the word becomes flesh. So that what is not suddenly becomes. Ah, and what is suddenly leaves. Just like that. Amazing miracle. Amazing miracle. A womb that is not becomes immediately. A womb that cannot receive child, cannot receive seed, becomes. Yesterday, I was ministering in Abuja and I was so touched when a woman walked up to me and said, Apostle, you were here a few years ago and you ministered to me and you prophesied um, that I would get married and I will have a child and then... I had a miscarriage the first time and I felt so bad. And when you returned, you prophesied that you have a baby girl. This is a baby girl. When I held that child, I was not holding a child. I was holding the word that has become flesh. That you may come here trusting God to increase your ministry and expand the reach, expand the demand upon your grace. There may be things to learn, but in the final analysis, there is a level of fire and grace that must rest upon you. And you will return back and marvel and wonder. It will look like you held a charm and put it in your pocket. What manner of the workings of the Spirit is this? Please believe the supernatural. The supernatural is not for Pentecostals. If you do not believe the supernatural, you, your life will be in trouble. It will be a compendium of pain. God can invade time and manipulate things. The anointing is the agency that he has allocated. Medicine has given us a glimpse of the way the anointing works. Watch this. If I have a boil, we have a lot of doctors here. If I have a boil and my leg is swollen, sometimes they may not need to do anything to the boil exactly. They will just give me a few drugs with a dosage and say, swallow it. Is that correct? And while I'm swallowing it, I don't speak to the drug and say, drug, please. 
make sure you don't go to my brain by mistake. This is where, no, no. Design in that drug is the ability to find what is wrong. Once you swallow it, once it enters your system, it becomes compatible with all your organs. Your organs begin to align them. Ah, God. And you will watch something within days start going down, going down. Last week when I saw you, your leg was swollen. Where did that mass go to? It vanished. Do you expect God to be that slow? What then is the difference between him and medicine? Medicine is, is a fragrance of his mercy reaching earth. Like, like I, 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 I wear perfume. And when I pass, whatever your nose can receive, you enjoy it for that moment. But what if I gave you the bottle? No, no, no. Please, I don't downplay medicine. But I want you to understand this. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe lives can change. I believe that what is not can become. In the twinkling of an eye, I believe it. Otherwise, we are gathered here for a waste of time. I really believe it. Ah! I believe it. I believe that something that is missing can return back. Everything is alive. I believe. I am a miracle myself. I'm not just a recipient of miracles. I am a miracle. This man that stands before you is a real miracle. So I know that miracles are real. Please don't get used to pain. Don't get used to the tragedies of life. Expect that God can invade this life. Let me tell you a miracle that happened to me. We were in Lagos for young and yielded. And then I ministered. I ministered in the church that we always use their auditorium. And something strange happened. While I was counseling, a man came who, um, of course, I'm sure he could understand English. But he felt comfortable speaking in Yoruba. And he came and sat close to me and started talking in Yoruba. You know, just assumed. And now he was an elderly man. This is something that happened last week. I didn't know. I said, now how do I respectfully tell this man, sorry sir, I'm not exactly Yoruba. And the guy was talking to me and the next thing that happened was I started understanding exactly what he was saying. This is not a lie. The same way you preach and someone is interpreting. I was hearing what you were saying. Then I was responding to him in English. And then he would take the first one. Take the second one. We were done and I prayed for him. Immediately I, w I finished praying for him. That was it. You, I will not be able to hear anything again. Where have you kept God? Oh. Where have you kept God? Where have we reduced the God of heaven to? Please listen, listen, listen. Listen. Man himself is a miracle. Everything happens on earth. It's just that we don't take our time to ponder. I believe in the supernatural. It is the way God reaches men. What is not becomes. That means it is possible for someone who has no business calling you to call you. Why should you wonder? It is the Lord's doing. Let it only be marvelous in your eyes. While you are listening to me, let the Holy Ghost speak to you. Take away the unbelief. Dear ones, take away the unbelief. There is a God that sits in heaven. That God is not a man. God is not an archangel. God is not Angel Michael. He's not a senior brother to the angels. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. Are we together? The supernatural. A generation that does not believe the supernatural 
is the generation that will truly miss God experientially. Okay. We need to trust God for grace. This is one of the benefits of things like praying in the spirit. To take you out of this mundane realm of carnality. Where we always we believe that things must happen by science alone. No, sir. There is a God in heaven. By this time tomorrow, there is a God in heaven. The rod of Aaron that did not have a root to the earth can still bring forth fruit. It is true. These have been my contemplations, so not just today. It's been in my heart. You can, you can see the passion with which I'm communicating. A generation is losing the essence of the reality of the power of God. The ministry of the anointing is gradually being lost. And when I say the ministry of the anointing, I'm not talking of flying up and down, falling down. The ability to demonstrate the existence of God who sits in the heaven. This has nothing to do with being an apostle or a prophet. It's how far God can reach to men. For I spoke a word. Yes. One of his supernatural can bring mercy, can bring favor, jump and accelerate your life and push you forward. Otherwise, why is he God? Please believe what I'm saying. God knows that he called you into ministry and he knows the people he's sending you to. He knows the stubbornness in their heart that until they see miraculous signs, they won't come. So he, listen, he's not going to send you just with a salmon. No! How then will you demonstrate and defend what he sent you? Moses said, what will, who will I tell Pharaoh sent me? The power of God. Let us be a generation that can believe the power of God. That when God says I can lift you, you believe it. When God says I can anoint you, you believe it. When God says I can turn your life around, you believe it. Please hear me. What more do you need to see to know that natural things don't count very much in this realm? You have to be outstanding by an agency that is not human. John 4.48 Except ye see miraculous signs, you will not believe. Jesus himself said it. Except you see it. There is a demonstration of the hand and the might of God that must rest upon us and rest upon our generation. Why will you write your prayer request if it will not be answered? Why should you travel? I'm aware that some of us have been here Right, a number of people that I ministered to in Abuja followed me here. There are people who have come from all over. There's a pastor, you're the one who came from Ukraine? From Ukraine, all the way. For heaven's sake, why will you come and watch a man? Am I a, a comedian? This is not an amusement park. Oh, there is a God that sits in heaven. Please hear me. There is a God that sits in heaven that can speak, that can lift, that can turn a man's life around. Shake that unbelief. Shake that unbelief. Get it out of your life and believe that God is able to turn a man's life around. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, restless love. tell you one of the major things that I know God is going to be doing tonight is healing the sick 
there are mysterious diseases that are coming and latching upon people. You see people dying for diseases and sicknesses with no name. It's, it's like headache, but it's not headache. It's like chest pain, but it's not chest pain. It's like asthma, but it's not asthma. It's like a lung, but it's not a lung. It's like a growth, but it's not a growth. Whatever it is, we know it's an oppression of the devil. Please sit down. Let me finish up and then we'll pray. So by the ministry of the anointing, number two, how blessings manifest. The second dimension is by the impartation of wisdom and understanding. The second way that the word becomes flesh is that the Lord by His Spirit will impart upon a man the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There are certain results that don't need the supernatural as it were. They just need an awareness of the laws of God and the fortitude to walk in accordance with those principles. There are dimensions that doesn't just need an event. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Two people outside. Please bring them here. Two people outside. I started sensing a very mighty grace. Tonight will be a great night of impartation. Please bring them here. Just listen to the word. The Lord will do a quick work. Two people. I see like rain. The rain of the Spirit is about to be drenched. For I spoke a word. Please bring them. The Lord is saying, I'm shifting you, both of you, that you are entering. A dimension of the favor of God. This is what I'm seeing. You came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor. And I declare by the Spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ over your lives and destinies, this is miracle service. It must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus. Shadow, you will light up. Mountain, you will climb up. Coming up to me. and then we'll pray. The third way that the word becomes flesh that possibilities get to you is through the ministry of men. 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 Men are God's conduits. They communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. 
you need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. Please tonight, let your expectation be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony when the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation. The word becomes a testimony when you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things. Then the word becomes flesh when men are introduced in your life. Men are carriers of possibilities, not just spiritual possibilities. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life. Everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit, providing illumination, will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God. Listen, when the man at Get Beautiful met Peter and John, he didn't say, such as in, is in heaven. He said, such as I have. There are things men have. Please hear me. There are things that men have. And they can give it. There are things that men have. And they can give it. A man can have a car and give you the key to the car. A man can have, but you see, the things that men have, real blessings are not physical. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all, healing all, they that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight, you will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute and declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside, pray. The rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I want to pray. Please listen. 
Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what He is doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you are about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. And he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please, insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please, I know you have heard. And I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please. As I begin to pray, there are people here. You see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay. Excuse me, that's all right. Leave the seats, please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers. But your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, I like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. You are only seeing the Bride, but it's the Spirit and the Bride. I'm about to pray. And I want you to please believe. Because everything that does not represent Christ must go today, now. A few weeks ago, I had an encounter. And the Holy Spirit told me, you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the spirit, a promotion. And the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now, I declare by the Spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. 
and except God is not God, any planting that is not of the Christ over your life and your destiny, I speak by the grace of God Almighty that He must let you go. Now, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils, I command spirits, yokes that have tied down the destinies of men, be gone now by the Spirit of the Christ. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. Go now, release every destiny, release every destiny, release every destiny. Release every destiny. Release every destiny. Release every destiny. I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives, shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny, right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost, be delivered now. 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 He baratos kalabaratakata. Enketa lakatos kabratasia. I command closed doors be open. Closed doors be open. Right now be open. Closed by the hand of darkness. I declare be open. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh, hey, hey. Yahweh, oh yeah, yeah. Lord is showing me chains over people's heads. I decree and declare, anyone here under any kind of yoke, at the count of three, inside, outside, online, I want you to shout that name again. It's not a ritual done out of unbelief. There is force and power in the name. One, two, three. Every orchestration. Go now. Be loose now. Be loose now. In the name of Jesus, be loose. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people. Who have been at the same level for many years. There is nothing you do in time that moves you forward. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs. I'm about to pray that prayer. Anyone who has been kept at the same position. Right now by the anointing of the spirit. I declare that limitation broken now. Broken now. Help them. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right away I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God. By whatever means. Your womb has been closed. By the authority of heaven, I declare right now, I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people. Married or unmarried, let that womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I tell you, the anointing of God is coming on people. 
whether you are married or not some of you are standing in for your loved ones i declare again womb be open now be open now be open now Be open now. I command every devil. Ah, I'm seeing such. I'm still seeing people's feet tied. Like a chain around the feet of people. Right now I decree and declare. Every chain. Makatos kabarakata. Holding anyone now. In the name of Jesus. I break those chains now. 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 Hallelujah. If you have any abdominal pain, lay your hands right now. Lay your hands just on your stomach any kind of abdominal pain doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid doesn't matter whatever just lay your hands here right now in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now the anointing of the holy ghost is coming upon your stomach area and in the name of jesus let there be a miracle right now let there be a miracle right now I'm seeing a number in the realm of the spirit 21. And the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people. And that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction, ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction, direction, direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare... I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three. Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three. Receive speed. 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 In your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, release them. Release everything you have tied down. One, two, three, go. Go now. Every strange spirit. Go now. Go now. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
Janet. I'm hearing a name, Janet. Hold on. Please don't, don't be rowdy. Just relax. Stand up, my dear. That lady on green, stand up. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax. Calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen. God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God, we are going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare, let it go now. I cross it by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a lady just where this my brothers are standing. Bring that person. Just this row. I'm seeing a cloud. Just right here. Right now as I'm speaking. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there. Please bring the person. It's a lady. Bring her. Janet, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hi. This is an instruction God is giving me. There is a family. I'm seeing the family. It's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Pray now. Pray now. Pray now. Pray now. The Lord is opening my eyes. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing the map of Benway State. An anointing is coming right now on Benway. God is bringing a miracle. I release my, I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. Benway State. Benway State. Benway State. I cause the workings of darkness over that territory. In the name of Jesus. Maketo laka prakatos. Be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there. But I stretch my hands. Kogi state. May that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory. That is under the yoke of bondage. Be free now. Be free now. For this state. Be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh.
I'm hearing a name, Agnes. Prophecy takes a lot of time. So we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes. Agnes. Agnes, I'm hearing that name. Please, very quickly, because I want to take our time and. God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing. Just like fire. Three families. Three families. By the spirit of the living God. Agnes. Who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes. Your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, that violent devil must let you go now even by the spirit of the there is no hiding place in the name of jesus there is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness i cast you by the god of heaven and i declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life in the name of jesus christ just hold her there I'm going to hold your hand. It's a strange mystery. I'm going to hold your hand, but the person who will fall is on this road. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare, just don't worry, leave the baby. The person who will fall is not this lady. It's on this road, like this, this road, right to the back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of the living God, that everything that does not name the name of Christ, right now I command it must go. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must go by the grace of God. I set you free, my dear. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Father, there is... Please don't be embarrassed. We may not prophesy to everyone. But there is a woman here, don't be embarrassed, you just had a miscarriage. Usually I would not ask you to come, but the Lord is asking to come out. Who is that person, please? There is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack. Under a strange attack. I'm praying right now. I don't know where they are, but I'm going to pray for you by the Spirit. Please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family. It's a Yoruba family from Kwara State. Yoruba family from Kwara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family, I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear, that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, the hand of God is upon you. And the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. 
don't be embarrassed now. Huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen, God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and we're intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things um, are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go in. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is, you would have left this girl now. She would have probably just gone like that. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, take what you put in her dream life. Let it live now. Take what you put inside her through the dream. Miscarriage. Please come. Please don't feel embarrassed. This is a family. Did I pray for you? Did I pray for you? It's all right. If I prayed for you, just go back. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, please place your hand. In the name of Jesus, return with child. Return with child. In the name of Jesus. There is someone here, you are in ministry. I've not done the impartation yet, but I'm seeing an anointing come on you. And this is for your ministry. There is a level of expansion that you have been praying for. And God is about to answer that prayer. I stretch my hands. I don't know where that person is. But in the name that is above all names, may that anointing, like a mighty rushing wind, in the name of Jesus, there's someone here, God, this night, is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you, your ministry will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hands. Right now, may that man to find the person. In the name of Jesus, I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing. I draw from the bowels of prophecy, and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You're sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja. Tell her that she was prayed for. And she should respect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare. You're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. Now, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people. Some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to travail by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from? Kaduna, how long have you been married? Last year. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? 
because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Yes. Where is he? Husband, please come. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Um, Where? I'm up in Kaduna. Kaduna. I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Edo State. There is a grace. Please hear me. What, what, where do you work? I work with the Lions of Africa. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. If you hear what I'm telling you. You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams. Huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them. But there are dreams that are oppressions. A lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down. Your life will change. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. Is the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the Spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm seeing something like a rope being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand, it's, it's not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it alright if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one. I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released, let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling you? I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life. Because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes, and you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Where did you come from? Yes, come. Yes, 
Where are the other two people? We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way. Madam, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Stand up, my friend. Why buy the life here? Who is sick? Madam, I want to pray for you. You see, Ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, you're going to start having what looks like a growth. And it will later become cancer. Because I'm looking at this woman. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Jesus. Madam. You did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. No. I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister and the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never. 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 That every one encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir. I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adam Awatu. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I, don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh. You just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That, that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man you will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? I'm a laundry. Washing with his hand. Yes. This is what I'm saying. This man, Kai, oh dear. This man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zakaria. His name is Zakaria. Yes, he's the presenting. This is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member, and yet he's doing. Now, I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship, and just of a sudden. He changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you. I'm not a pro, don't go around fighting anybody, huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you. Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gates before you. That the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny. And this man, it's not that he's using a laundry to wash him clothes like, a, like an animal. Sir, you have come here for God to change your life. And I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you?
English, how to speak anyone. <laughs> the Bible visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, he lives. You have female children. I have two. And you want I a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. <laughs> That's what uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children. Otherwise, you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the values, the value system of the kingdom, the spirit life must be at work in us. In as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children, male and female, when our people are getting married, I pray for them that God will give them children, male and female. But you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say, give me male children, female children. Of course, I understand. I'm an African. Because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam, Look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, yes, you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I I, I, I Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Sir, you declare he lives upon my life and you say it is done. Listen, number one, number one, yes, God is bringing favor to your yes, life. Sir. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. I want you to believe it. You believe that? Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again and he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have kids. My okay. Sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing. Kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yay! Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. This is your husband. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Mm. Since 2005, no child. No again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please. Reduce public life. Watching football. Going for marriages that you don't have any business. To. I'm not saying you should not honor people. But... The times that we are living in now, the problems on people, is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine 
that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years. No child. Her period ceased completely. The devil sat on it. Let me see how you have a child. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You can see. How will you be sitting there and then God will just call you? I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing... Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? in the name of Temeko, I, I, I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come, supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? What now? Six months. Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he just looked at me. You are not uh, divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. Sir? He's, he just went, but you are not divorced. Uh, he's staying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. He may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba. When people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman, and think the husband is this. Mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you. First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back to the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I curse it now in Jesus' name. See, anyone here, I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick. We have to be fast. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here, the moment you start a relationship with a guy, he becomes serious and just when he's deciding to do anything marriage it must scatter you continue to enter relationships relationships loving and unloving loving and unloving today you are in love tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself i'm praying right now by the anointing of the holy spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed i declare by the power of the holy spirit inside and outside anyone who is under that category by the god of heaven let the power of god come on you now to end that captivity let the power of god come on you now to end that captivity you see please give this woman her photo that woman under the anointing we have to pray um, the Lord is asking me, we are praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out. But in this family, you never settle maritally, but you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage. out of And, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children the lord wants to deliver that family right now in the name of jesus christ ah.
Why is she coming out? The, the family is... She just came out on her own. No, don't worry. Well, she, she, she's crying because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not. You see, the thing about the anointing, I told you. Sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are. But in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying I should tell you. You see, let me tell you. For all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you, that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockage to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Someone will run out under the anointing. Hold the person and bring the person out. That will be the last prophecy. The power of God is coming on someone. It's not something you can control. By the anointing, you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Please, when that happens, bring the person. I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady come. My dear, hold my hands. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, in the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw. In the name of Jesus, by the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. 
all the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who are prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer, but particularly if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue and we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we are going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer requests? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them. And let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, um, overflow two, overflow three, and then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down. Let's call that overflow four. Okay. Okay, there is, there is overflow two B. Then there is overflow four. Please listen. This is overflow one. This is overflow two. There is overflow two B. From this place right to the roadside, second equa down. Then there's overflow four. Just from the gate of overflow three. Then we have overflow three in the main building. And then online. Please make your way. Come out and stand according to those various overflows there will be people there to minister to you right now we'll do it very fast our time is gone please submit your prayer request i'll be laying hands on all of them here right now you can just wave them there will be someone by your side we apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled you would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us, you can allow them to sit on your seat, pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time 
to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the Spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Abaratos calabrandege baratos kedi. Abratos zadege baratos shalekatos. Ente prata salagato brade kedi. Harusa tabradisha. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name of that is above all names. There are, hold on please. There are people here, this is a death sentence. There are people here, this is an impossible situation. There are people here, God will, the best thing God will talk to is far. But I pray, what looks impossible, I bow my knees to the God of heaven, the one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living Lord. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month you return here rejoicing. Don't let the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual but is a pattern that is written here as God is visiting you here every other person connected to you whose request you have written here we command a miracle for them where they are in the name of Jesus Christ There are situations here that need the blood. I declare by the mystery of the blood. There are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven. By the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant. We cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus. And the king could not sleep in the night. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And he saw there written what Mordecai did. Whoever must remember you for this request to be granted. By the God of heaven, we open the book of remembrance tonight. Any man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here, we put pressure on them to release it now. Every family here, webbed in shame and reproach, it looks like there is no dignity. The speakings of God does not seem to find expression here. 
I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven. Please help those under the anointing. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed. In the name of Jesus, please believe. Let your, don't be distracted. Focus on the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I command those doors be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every grounded ministry here, every grounded business, every grounded family, hear the word of the Lord. I command and I declare, come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Every helper assigned from God who has not yet paid attention to you, and what you request. I stand by the God of heaven. And in the name of Jesus. I compel them to attend to your matter. I compel them to attend to your matter. I compel them to attend to your matter. Everything that should have happened. And has not yet happened. According to the program of God, you know you should have entered that level and you are not there. By prophecy, I push you to that level. By prophecy, I push you to that level. Listen. You see, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm not just speaking. I'm placing something upon your life. You may not see it, but you leave this place and watch what happens to you. Then you will see things turn around. Let me pray for you. The kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life. Please receive this one. In the name that is above all names. May that mantle like a cloak. Sakatapakatos. Kepeketos kabaruta. Epeketekotos shopakata. Kratos shotes kabarata. Take favor. Take favor. Carry favor. Carry favor. In the name of Jesus. Every area you have struggled in your life, you have done what you know to do. In the name of Jesus, I declare that that struggle comes to end now. Now please listen. The anointing your destiny needs for this season. Please listen. Every season has a grace requirement. Every season. There are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them. Yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place. I pray for you. This is an impartation. Wherever you are, I declare like the dew of heaven, the kind of grace you must carry for this season. Let it land on your destiny now. By this anointing, I forbid you from being ignored. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. The things that must be done through your hands in this season, for it to be said, this is the Lord's doing. 
as you are lifting your hands, may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits. Anyone in ministry here, I declare over you, go back to your various assemblies and platforms. Let there be fire on your altar. Fire on your altar. Fire on the ministration. Let the gifts of the Spirit work powerfully. In the name of Jesus. We're rounding up. Let's pray over our finances. This issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees. Bringing many families to their knees. Distracting people. The time we should spend on the things of the kingdom we are focusing on money, what to eat, what to wear, house rent, building projects. It is not the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Ebenezer, the helper of men, I declare this month, even beginning from today, receive strange financial help. Receive strange financial help. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, strange financial help. Everyone under the sound of my voice, trusting God for an honorable job. Listen, there are jobs that don't have honor. They are time wasters. They are devourers. I pray for you. The kind of job that represents dignity, that will honor you and help you to build your home well. May the God of heaven give you such a job. Let me pray for your spiritual life. If you have cars, you have houses, and your spiritual life is not on fire, you are not doing well. The first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life. That your prayer life fire, word life fire, fellowship with the spirit fire. No room for up today, down tomorrow. I pray for you, fresh fire upon your prayer life. 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 Every lukewarmness, slumber, gluttony, these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency, I declare in the name of Jesus, receive victory over them. The grace that can keep a man in the presence of God, the, the staying power that you can stay with the world, stay in prayer, not rushing and rush out and one power. God is not a magician. I pray for you. The unction to stay. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated. There are some of you now. Listen. There are levels of graces you should have left. Sincerely. There are dimensions of power. There are haziness. Certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception. There is a level of authority. There is an office you should be sitting on now. But it's not yet there. I pray for you. The mantle that will shift you to that level. May that grace come upon you now. The mantle that will shift you to that level. Makatoska barakato. Ekete-teke-leketa-katoska pariata. May that grace come upon you now. Listen. Everything in your life that has refused to grow. God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow. No membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase, no impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now.
Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit, like the angel of death, is moving over families, attacking children, attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata, and they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast, they will say you have a malignant, a tumor. See, let me tell you, whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life. Challenges are not the issue, but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said. If you have not seen what God said, don't stop. I pray for you. The spirit of a warrior, the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted at noonday, the spirit of death. If there is anyone here, that death is looming around the corridors of your life or your loved ones or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline I declare let death lose its grip over you now receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about you usurping authority over people. There is a real grace. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive. We receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movement till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused, looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here. Quickly, I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly.
quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand and say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important that we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do, please, you are a man of God here, hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity, except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on His mercy, He will act as though He's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me sincerely. Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit. From today, I declare and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven. The Lord Himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but... Um, Please listen, we're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
um i i know i welcome everybody we're going to welcome the first timers now but particularly i just want to honor a few people first i want to bless our precious people the delegates from um the king's court and the oasis god bless you hallelujah the redeemed christian church of god that's um that's the church that nathaniel bassi pastors god bless you thank you there are a group of people here adorable people these people take they take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place and um we love you thank you thank you for your love thank you for your kindness i want us to honor the pastor from ukraine bless you bless you thank you very much and um now i know there are so many people please don't find offense is by no way belittling you every we believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um values our pillars here i just felt i am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones and so i just wanted to to do that honor and i think i hope i'm right yes it should be him um i saw elisha maman somewhere he just squeezed himself that's him may god bless you very humble and very great man i love you may the lord bless you in the name of jesus every other person who has come here especially for those of you who came from so very far um aside from those that i called within a few minutes i will request that you come um and stand here so that we will honor you we believe in honor and i know that in many churches they have different ways of receiving people but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here when we call you out to honor you we really mean it it's not some christian stage managed acting no genuinely sincerely so wherever you are aside from the extreme overflows i would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand but for those of us who are here overflow one overflow two please gallantly walk and come right here if this is your first time worshiping with us we want to honor you you're that important and we love you koinonia is this the best you can do hallelujah please stand hallelujah thank you very much let them come while i beloved i don't want you to give up stay tuned and get connected keep listening keep being blessed by the mouth of the lord through his servant apostle joshua selma on this platform reflector hub tv don't forget the scripture speaking and the bible says god makes all things beautiful in his time this season you must know it is your time is your time to shine is your time to reign is your time to experience the freshness and the newness of the wine jesus serves is your time to encounter the lord afresh is your time for salvation is your time for deliverance the lord makes all things not some things beautiful in this time it is truly your time to experience and to come in contact with that healing power of the lord that you have so desired beautiful in this time it's your time to embrace a new walk with the lord it's your time to refreshing that relationship that has been looking like one-sided has been struggling it's your time to come alive in that business that all hope seems to have been lost don't forget the scripture said though a tree being cut down at the scent of water it will spring back to life it's your time because when the lord breaths reaches everything you cast your hand upon to do it will truly come alive it will spring back no matter how long that situation must have been decaying no matter how long that situation or that obstacle might have been there no matter how long that condition or that circumstances has faced you or has posed truly challenge to your life it's with great assurance that we bring to you the inevitable counsel of the lord the wonder working counsel of the lord that this is the time that god makes all things beautiful in your life no matter what you're passing through don't give up yet i hope you know the scripture in the book of job the bible said the question was asked to Job: i doubt the first man or was that found before the hills you are not the first but I can assure you that this will be an end to that challenge. This will be an end 
to that situation. This will be an end to that long years of weeping, of sorrow. This will be an end to that long terminal disease that has so afflicted your life, the infirmities, the infirmities that darkness has thrown upon your health and is choking your body, is making you uncomfortable, bringing so much inconvenience to your life. This is the sad time because the hand of the Lord coming upon it will make all things new. And I tell you, the previous story men have written about your life will definitely be raised because God is set to do new things. But adventure, you are a new viewer. I'd like you to subscribe to Reflect to Hope TV YouTube channel. Ensure to stay tuned. Share this video to your friends, family, neighbors, loved ones, so as to also get them blessed and release this message of hope to them. Don't forget to hit the notification bell by the side of the subscribe button and see you always in our next video. We love you so much and God bless you.